This podcast is brought to you by JList.com. JList.com has brand new art books available. They got so many art books. They have art books from Free, Ghost in the Shell, Girls in Panzer, Idol Master, New Game, Toho Project, Vocaloid, tons of hentai art books as well, and it just never ends. So you can fill your bookshelf with art books just like Chiaki and get your art fix on over at JList.com. And now it's time to start the podcast. You're listening to the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast. Take your anime addiction to the next level at aaapodcast.com slash join. And now, here are your anime addicts. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 433 of the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast. I am your host, Mitsugi, and on this scorching Sunday, I am joined by a good friend in studio. His name is Kazuo. He's wearing a New York Yankees hat, but I am unsure if he's ever watched a New York Yankees baseball game. He shakes his head no. I could not name one player on the New York Yankees, my friend. Well, And I will say, as scorching as it is outside, it's even hotter in here. Ooh, it's because I'm here. That's right. I, I just shaved my head this morning, and the shine from my head would even make Krillin jealous. And, of course, <laughs> we, uh, have, uh, we have a lovely lady up in Cincinnati. Her name is Mandy. Mandy, how are you today? Hello. I'm doing all right. How are you guys doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. good. Thank you for asking. We just talked about true crime with Mandy on a Hobby Addicts episode. where we had I'm so to... jealous of that. Oh, oh. And that voice you just heard is the infallible, the fabulous the well-dressed, the sweet memory-eating, Enzo, how are you? Wow, that was a lot, but hey, man, thank you. It's so nice to be here for, <laughs> with all you guys today. How was the Hobby Axe episode? I'm so jealous I missed it. I love true crime. It's, well, It's fascinating. Mandy told some great stories, and uh, we dived into the psyche of serial killers. So, Yeah, that, that's why it's interesting. That's why I love that shit. And if you would like to get that hobby addict, you can go to our website, www.aaapodcast.com. On the top, there's a button that says Join the Addicts. You can make sure we continue to broadcast by helping to fund the, the one, two, three, four, four, at least four computers that we have in this room, which no wonder it's hot in here. Well, five if you include myself. Oh. I am. I am. Six if you include the busted tablet that's lying on the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> and um, throw us a few, few, few bucks, and you'll get our hobby addicts, so you can hear true crime, the hentai episode, so you can hear uh, the, all kinds of naughty stories, and of course the after parties, which is fun. And yeah, and of course if you go to our website, also you can join the Discord, which is located on the top of the website. You click the uh, join the Discord button; it takes you straight to the Discord, so it makes it pretty much as easy as it possibly could be for you. And uh, before we before we kick this episode off i want to make mm -hmm. a note okay that right before the podcast started yes our tablet died what yes oh no it has been clinging on to life support for a long time are you talking about the tablet that we wait spent like dead hundreds dead? and hundreds of pennies on yes incredible yes i can't believe it broke so i am literally operating two computers at the same time i mean mm. with, with my left hand i am playing drops and adjusting levels off of one laptop and then with his right hand he I will am. grab a chip and eat it well i was gonna say grab something else but a chip oh, works that was from death note <laughs> A chip and eat it. And I'll grab a chip and eat it. Um. Uh, <laughs> Before we kick this off, there was a very funny gift that was given to Kazuo this past week. Gift is a strong. Oh, gift. I love this. <laughs> yes. Why don't you tell us about this gift while I queue it up? Help me out. Okay. Uh, um. So, oh man, I forgot who sent it. Hold on, let me pull it up. Tentacle my... Time Eternal. Yes. Tentacle Time Eternal sent me a question that I often get, which is Kazuo. How do I find the Discord? So we we do we do indeed have this clip. Yes, he sent it in an audio form. Yeah, it's like an audio book. Yes. Now, of course, he sent it to me in Discord. Well. So I'm assuming he found it. Well, let's play this clip for everybody let's, listening. Let's hear it. It's so good, we can't oh, not. We can't, I love it. We yes, can't please not play, play it. This. <laughs> this is for you, Kazuo. Enjoy. 
この番組は j l i s t c o ドご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Tell me, Kazuo, how do I find the Discord? Written and voiced by Tentacle Time Eternal. He's, so, he's got a good voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He does, he does. Oh, what a great podcast. The hosts and fans I have adored. But one thing keeps puzzling me. Where can I find the Discord? I like the music.、Yep. Oh, how I have searched. The web I have explored. That which is eluding me. Where? Can I find the Discord? There, guys, where? Oh,、Such、dear、poetry. sweet Kazuo, please let my plight not go ignored. With your brows furrowing in hate, where can I find the Discord? With such a stern glare, eyes that would have me gored, he roared as his anger soared. I will tell you only once how to find the Discord. Our Facebook group, the About tab you left unexplored. There is the answer of how you will find the Discord. Tom. <laughs> I thank you, Kazuo, for the knowledge that you have poured. But isn't there also an easier way of how to find the Discord? There is now. AAA Podcast main page. Up at the top, it is stored. An ease for anyone to see how to find the Discord. With a glowering scowl, Kazol leapt up to the sunset, passing on that knowledge as my reward. Legends say he breaks those who would foolishly dare ask him how to find the Discord. That, that was incredible. Yeah, that was fantastic, that actually. Was... So, thank you so much for that. You,、uh, you, you're, you're loved. That is awesome. You're loved. That was some <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe shit. Yeah, yeah that, was, that took me to like a, a wild place in my mind. That was, that was well written. Shit. I want one. Allan Poe shit, she said. <laughs> That's a pretty、uh, high bar right there.、Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. So, now you、yeah. should know how to find the Discord. You should. So, now that he has told、yeah. you, I expect that you will ask Kazo every week、no. how to find the Discord. <laughs> Okay, so on this episode of the podcast, without further ado, we have a, a special episode, a very logistically difficult episode to do for you.、Um, we have figured out a way to extend a microphone, a camera, and the headphones 50 feet、mm, true. to my kitchen, where we will be watching Kazuo maybe burn down my house. Look, I don't know if you know this, but people in the streets refer to me as Chef Boy Ar Kazuo. Oh, my God. I am, I am a master. At making、Cook? hot, at making what have you? What is your what is your cooking rep,、uh, resume? I mean, look, dude, I can I can pretty much cook anything from instant mac and cheese、uh-huh. to hot dogs. Okay, you know, can you cook? Can you cook rice?、Uh, I did buy a rice cooker and I tried to cook rice once, and in the rice cooker did not turn out well. You you messed up rice in the rice cooker. It failed miserably. You put the so you put the rice and the water in it, right? And you push go. Yeah, no, I didn't.、Um, I think I might have missed a step. Wow. Well, Kazuo is going to、oh. be cooking chicken curry, Japanese style chicken curry with rice, not with a rice cooker, but、oh、with the stove top. All right. <laughs> and we were going to watch and ridicule him and love him too while he does it. What could go wrong? I have a fire extinguisher in my kitchen. I did see that. It's there for a reason. Okay. He will be cooking with oil. Oh, God. There could be a fire. Oh, my God. And so we're going to do that. We're also going to be doing. Wait, I didn't know. I did not know about the oil part. That scares me. <laughs> no, you have to. You have to. You have to cook the vegetables and the chicken prior to putting it in the curry, which requires、yes. you to cook them in a skillet, which does require oil. So yes, that's、right. correct. So we're going to do that. We're also. We also have a, a big slate of impressions for you. We're going to be doing banana fish. Dun 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 dun. Banana fish. Bam, banana bam, fish. Banana. We're also going to be doing <laughs> review <laughs> review Starlight, Agu Genius Dolls, Island, and Homes of Kyoto. Mm. Yep, and that will、uh, bring us to this. This is the third of four of four rounds of impressions. We have five more shows to pass, so quite a few of these could make it. So,、uh, mm. anything else, guys? Before we、uh, before we jump into this chaos of trying to manage this makeshift soundboard? Oh, I'm ready.、Nope. I have 
There's nothing I could say that could preface what could happen today. <laughs> It's time for big news of the week. All right, guys, we got some. We got a couple good news stories here. The first news story is Your Name's director Makoto Shinkai. We all know who he is. Has a new film. He is saying it's gonna. It's definitely gonna happen next year. Let me guess. Is it about a guy who falls in love with a girl, but they can't be together for some reason? But in the end, maybe they find a way to be together. That is almost every movie he's ever made. Yeah. It'll be gorgeous. <laughs> it'll be beautiful as hell, though. Mm -hmm. oh, it'll probably m m melt my retinas. So he teased oh, yeah. on his Twitter account that the new film will release next year. He said at the Busan Film Festival in 2016 that he would like to like um, he wanted to make his new his next Toho work in the next three years. So that would pretty much put him in the timetable for 2019. And get this, he said the next work will probably be about young boys and girls, motherfucker, in adolescence. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, wow. okay. But Way to I, drop I like an intense like, swear word. Do anything like, else, guy. Okay, okay, but like literally why fix anything that's else. Not broken? I'm Why sorry. fix something that's not that broken? It's though? irritating. You know what I'm saying? Enzo disagrees with you. <sighs> I guess Didn't he do she and her cat? <sighs> yes. Like, that was like the first thing he that ever did. That's different. That's true. You, you don't know. Maybe she was in love with that cat. But Maybe they that... couldn't be together because <laughs> it was a cat. Damn. <laughs> well, Damn. I actually didn't watch that. Neither did I. Mm. I don't know. You what? I didn't watch she and her have cat. You, have you, how, many, how many Shinkai movies have you seen? Uh. Have you seen Voices of a Distant Star? Yes. Have you seen Plays Promise in our early days? Um, what a good one that I one don't is. I remember. Huh? They all kind of blend together. Have you seen Biosoku 5 Centimeters? Which yes. I, which I think is his best movie, by the yes. way. Yes. Have you seen... I think it's his best one also. Have you, Yeah, I, I think it's amazing. Have you seen the, ugh, the music in that? The one song in that? Um, yeah. What is the song Dude, called? The um, ending scene is too too, it's too much. Too much. What, what is that song called? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember, but it's really amazing. <laughs> Have you I'm seen, bad with score names. Have you seen Children Who Chase Lost Voices from Deep Below, which is probably the worst movie he's made? No, I have not seen that one. Still beautiful, though. But beautiful. Yeah, not the, not I the think best. I've seen that one. It was an awful lot like... It, it strongly resembled Ghibli. He was... Mm. He took... He took. Uh, he was inspired. Yeah, he took extreme liberties from Ghibli, I think particularly Princess Mononoke for that movie. Okay, so... Yeah. Um, All I'm saying is Mamoru Hosoda is better. All right. Probably. And I demand he gets the respect he deserves. Probably, but I want to see a celebrity death match between the two of them. Uh, well, he would yeah. beat. Oh, he would beat. <laughs> well, I don't know. My mom, he, my, have you ever seen Shinkai? In person? No. No, I like, mean, like he's he do, he's done interviews and like like oh, video. Yeah. He looks like an emaciated like tumbleweed. Yeah. Like I could breathe on him and oh. he would die. I've never seen Hosoda. I don't even know. Is well, he... it doesn't matter. Hosoda was probably like this like badass old dude. I don't know. Uh, Let's see. I'm gonna look him up. What would you guys? Let me ask the three of you. What would you like yeah, yeah. his next movie to be? If you could, if, if it could be anything. Hmm. Well, you know, I I think he has an eye for, uh, not for pure fantasy, but I think he has an eye for like a whimsical reality. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I think that could work well. The thing is, like, that works really well for love stories. So he is doing what I picture him doing most optimally, which is you know, youth and love. But I think he could also put all pull off like a like i would love to see him do an isekai like you know what i mean i know i know isekai is kind of like taboo for a lot of us because like we're, we're like over the the, the we're like he, over that he's done that already I think he could, has he done that i was just about to say i think he's done it already children who chase lost like, voices from deep below basically yeah but, but are they going i don't know if they're i don't know if that counts because they're not are they going into a different world i don't maybe I don't they go that. into the world of the dead and then they come back uh, so I don't know if that I don't, counts. I don't remember that. Maybe that okay, I want him to make a more modern, like, age with characters that are adults. Isekai. I think he could manage. I think he. I would like to test him in that field. Okay. Yeah. I mean, his artwork is gorgeous. To be perfect for the genre. <laughs> yeah, Kazo, you were so. very opinionated yeah, about sure. this. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what I would like to see him do. Well, while you're thinking, I'll tell you right now that I would like to see Voices of a Distant Star made into a full-length movie yeah I was not a 25 minute ova but like in because his his mecca work and that was exactly actually pretty thinking. good yeah i was like he should do some kind of like mecca 
thing. I don't know, though. But. It was compelling. The Mecca looked nice. I'd like to see a larger, like, grander outer space story. Another thing is, though, want, I don't know. Do you want to give him war? You want to give him some space war? Yeah, man. Yeah. I Fuck, just don't know I mean, what he's capable of, to Well, be the, there was some space battle in that in, in, in Voice yeah. of the Differences in Star. Well, I, I mean, as far as, like, his writing is concerned. Like, I don't know if he's able to write, like, a deeply involved story like that i think the stories he's writing now are a little deeper than what you'd normally get from mm. the action space i think emotionally i but don't they're, but they're yeah. smaller i don't scale. disagree i agree that I, I don't know if he can but like i think his vision is what we love about him so like if he just finds a story from someone else that can do that and then he just puts it on the screen i think that's what i would want like i want a master storyteller to tell me this space yeah opera i thing. feel like i, I feel like it happen I feel like he is a good director for sure. I totally. just don't, and 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 and, um, and and good a good art director as well. I just don't know if he's that good of a writer. Like I I feel like he just writes the same thing over and over again because that's all he can write. Like I, yeah. I and he hasn't he hasn't like proved me wrong. He hasn't like stepped out of his shell. I think Your Name <laughs> was a great movie. I think that it wasn't some groundbreaking originality for him even, but. It was a well-told story, like like structurally, yeah, it was yeah. a good story, and it looked amazing. I, I honestly don't think it matters what his next movie is going to be. I think it's going to make uh, a ridiculous sum of money. It may even make oh, yeah. it may even make more what than. What about Garden of Words? Did you guys like that one? Oh, oh I, I love. Hold on, I love Garden of Words. <gasps> Wait, Holy say, shit! Foot fetish anime? Yeah, another story where the, oh, where the boy and the girl. It is not a fetish oh, anime. That, a, movie, that is movie's really subtly beautiful. There's there's some footy stuff in it. I don't know if it's a foot some fetish footy, some anime. Footy stuff. <laughs> He's right, a shoemaker. Though. Even you're right though. Even even Garden of even Garden of thing. Words is about two people that it's can't really be together. It's the same thing. Do you think Shinkai like I'm had t- some love that he couldn't? You he know like what? fell in love with his like older like with his neighbor that was like 12 years older than him and he can't get yeah. over it. I'm telling you, one day in the future, people are gonna look back and be like, you know what? Kazuo was right. It's all the same. He keeps writing the same story over and over again. Maybe we should have a podcast topic where we rank directors. Oh, like a top cool. 10 director list. That'd be cool. There are definitely at least... Just, there are just anime directors or just all animation? What? No, just what? anime Yeah, directors. yeah, just anime. I don't need any Pixar yeah. in here. Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Just asking. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, my goodness. All right, anything okay. else, guys? Uh, did you have to do... No, no that's cool. Did you come I look up with your to suggestion? It. What? Oh, I was I was kind of like going with you along with the like okay. space yeah. battle war type thing would be interesting. I think he proved he can do it. Yeah. I think he has the money now to do it and the staff to do it. I th- yeah. Voices of Innocent Star, the man was doing the whole damn thing alone. True. For the most part, I think the only thing he didn't That's do was wild. the female voice. Although, and, some... and, and I think the music. Other than that, he was did everything. Yeah, I will say. The certain parts of it were gorgeous, and the story was interesting, but. The, the character designs were the character designs were pretty bad. They weren't, yeah. But that was like he was I, young I just feel like he needs help. He needs he needs somebody to like work alongside him. Yeah, like know, a sick ghostwriter, you know. Yeah, something like that. Can you imagine how crushingly hard it would be to make a thirty minute OVA like that alone? Oh my god, yeah, that would take <laughs> your entire life. I mean, well, I mean, or three years of his life. Yeah, yeah. You know, twenty four seven. All right, guys, let's move on. How about that? Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Prepare for trouble. Make it double. double. Shut up! You haven't had one useful thing to say since you got here. Make it or double. Okay, so there's some tourism, tourist hating going on in Japan. Oh right no! Now. Oh, that's what? not nice. This is pretty really funny, sad. actually. Um, so we all know Japan doesn't like foreigners very much. They won't. They won't really let you know it in public. Like if you're in Japan on vacation, you're not going to leave feeling like you were hated. But right. The but but like behind computer screens, there are angry nerds like hating you. Um, so yeah. there is a there is a hotel sort of in on Mount Koya, which is a very famous mountain in Japan, where you can go and like live with the monks for a weekend or whatever. Oh this, yeah, this has been a thing for a while. We all I think we all know of this, right? I th- yeah, I think I do. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, so people have been bitching about the hotel at Mount Koya. It, I guess it got added <laughs> to Booking.com, and so there's been a lot more people going to Mount Koya for vacation or just to have the experience. And so people have been bitching about the accommodations at Mount Koya on Twitter. And one of the monks at the at Mount Koya is firing, is just going balls out on these people on, on Twitter. T- on Twitter, a monk. Yep. 
Because these monks, not all the monks are like... badass 2018 thing I've ever fucking heard. Well, <laughs> all right, so my understanding is that not all the monks are like this reserved, quiet people. Right. You know, like they're not... You know, you hear about the monks that they, they can't speak for five years or whatever or all mm. this. That is not this group. Dude, I, when I was... Like, this was years and years ago when I worked at Best Buy. There was a group of monks that came into Best Buy. Like, Buddhist monks okay. wearing the full-on garb yeah. to buy a television. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Why... You you guys watch TV? I guess so. Well, yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. That's weird, though. What the hell were they doing in Florida? That's a good question. But they were in full garb, like the orange suit thingy. Yeah. Yeah, with the footies. So tourists already don't have a good reputation in Japan because they do things like taking photos of those monks, which you're not supposed to take photos of them unless they give you permission. Mm. There have been some vandalisms that have been happening in Kyoto lately. People have been destroying bamboo and stuff like that. And, of course, uh, Logan Paul, who has a YouTube channel, is a dumbass, and he does things like putting... Dude, he he set us mm -hmm. back years in relations with Japan, bro. I mean, yeah, yeah putting GoPros on convo on sushi, belt conveyor su sushi conveyor belts. And was he the one that went to the suicide forest? Yeah. yeah. Yes, dude. What a, what oh, a, my. What a prick. That, that shit triggers me every time I think about it. Like, how could... Like, how idiotic and ignorant are you to visit a country and not even look up anything about it? Like, what the fuck? I want to take this guy and punch him in the throat. Yes, actually. especially now that I've been there. Like, <laughs> I, I can would only imagine that. how like uncomfortable everyone was in Tokyo. You know, like if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna go to the suicide forest and find a dead body and fuck with it, yeah, you deserve to be put in prison. Probably, mm. you're def you're 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 desecrating a corpse. I'm pretty sure that's a crime. Yeah. yeah. So this and, son and of a bitch should go to jail. It's just like you should lose everything because like that's the most fucked thing. I think like, how, how does your brain go to that? You know, as your first action. Here's I'm I'm gonna say this to Logan Paul. Come to Florida, come to my come to my place in St. Petersburg. Oh shit! Oh no! And I'm Let gonna punch know. you in Let your know. throat. Let him know, Pope. Oh god! I will <laughs> punch you in the throat and slam your head against the windshield of my car, mm -hmm. and okay. then I'll, and then you can leave. Interesting. Are you throwing him into the pit with the moe? No, the moe he's people? too good for that. Or he, he, he's he, he's he's too good for that. He doesn't. He well, he doesn't deserve the moe. That's, they, that, there has to be a separate pit. The moe, the moe is too much for that. for that. This is a uh, well, that is an egregious I'm sorry crime. Sorry for him suggesting this. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we will, that, it could it could be like one of those situations where you combine two like evil things and then it just explodes and like destroys the world. So maybe you can't put them together. Mm -hmm. That might be true. It's, I see. Yeah, I see. You gotta be cautious. But you're a son of a bitch. Cross the streams. Don't yeah. mm, don't don't make a reference that poor Kazuo can't get. Oh, I forgot. He doesn't see Everybody that else that's listening gets that reference, but damn, that's, okay. what? that's when like two dudes are peeing in the same urinal, nope, and you're not. That's no? not. Oh. That's not what we're talking about. Wait, what? Oh. <laughs> Yo, Mitz and I are definitely gonna cross swords when we when he comes. Oh, we're me. definitely gonna do it. We're totally gonna cross swords at one point. Yeah, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to Sweet Memory, <laughs> and, ha and, and have our cute coffees that has a diuretic in it called caffeine. And when we're ready to do it, we're gonna cross our streams. Dude, I saw. <laughs> I saw. This is like real friends. Never mind. I can't say what I saw. This is an anti episode. Just say it. <laughs> this dude <laughs> set, uh, showed me a video on his phone that he took when he was hooking up with this girl. And he took her into the bathroom and uh -huh. had her put her face over the toilet bowl. And he peed on her face. Wow. And it was so much <laughs> well, pee. Well, she probably liked it. Uh. <laughs> it was so much pee, dude. I was like, why is it still going? He's probably probably hold it for like a day and a half so that he could have Crazy. the biggest, the best time of his life. So, I'm anyway. sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize to everyone listening that I brought us to this place. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, so here's some of the things that were being said on Twitter. So, there were people complaining about how bland the food was, to which the... Monk said, yes, it's Japanese monastic cuisine, you uneducated fuck. Awesome. <laughs> On Twitter. Yes. The futons and pillows weren't the best. The meals were basic and vegetarian. Nothing to be too excited by, but I assume fairly authentic vegetarian meal would have been good if a little better communication in English, for example, history of the building and the Buddhist order, the life of the monk, and what is happening during the prayer ceremony, any history of the various on the various works of art on display, and the monk's response, would you like to read the response, Cosmo? Uh, sure. The, where it says property response? Yeah. <clears throat> this is ultimately a place of training. So meals and everything are, yes, going to be basic. Just because you are a Westerner doesn't mean you are going to be treated specially. Mm, let them know. No one gets some <laughs> special explanation of things because that's how it has always been. Maybe Damn. if you understood the language and culture, but no. Damn. Uh, let's see here. That's all there is. Okay. 
Uh, who wants to read the next one? Uh, like yeah, a, I could do it. I, I want to know. This, this is their responses right. to like reviews that people have. People are up for unjustifyingly criticizing something they know nothing about. Yeah. He's going hog wild. On so the, the the next review is uh, not worth the trip there. Of uh, uh, I guess the positive is it's a wonderful landscape and has temples, and the negative is it's a very expensive place. If you are not into the spiritual aspect of the place, I would not go there. The morning ceremony was disappointing. It was not a ceremony, but only three monks praying for themselves. Oh, oh my no. fucking god! All right, wow. Do we need to read the response? Pro- yes. Yeah, ahead. Mandy, you you read the response. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, really? This actually happens to be the most inexpensive temple in Koyosan and about the morning uh, service. You have no understand, yep, no understanding in of what is going on. Sorry, the typo. Uh, you have the chance to offer incense and give thanks. Anything else does not concern you. Damn, he wow. said, get off my fucking block. <laughs> get off my lawn. Get off my property, you little bitch. <laughs> yeah, he said, get off my fucking block. All right, who wants to read the next one? There's only, this is the last one. Uh, do you want to read it? Vince? Yeah, I'll read okay. it. Fine, okay, geez. Don't be so pushy. <laughs> Comfortable hotel just next to Ukonoin. Well located just next to Ukonoin. Good food and spacious and comfortable rooms. Felt more like a hotel than a genuine temple experience. What the fuck? To which the monk responded, I don't have any idea what you were expecting. <laughs> However, this is a genuine temple, not a hotel. We cannot take responsibility for your unrealistic expectations. Yo, he said, come catch his hands. Come catch his damn hands right now. So, and he uh, said, your mama. He said, your mama. And he said, your mama. Damn. Damn. So, yeah, it's, um, it's unfortunate that in Japan they, uh, they seem to be heading in a direction of not liking foreigners very much. Well, to be fair, in their defense, the foreigners tend to be idiots. Well, and we are idiots. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you go to a temple and you're upset because it's too temple-y. It's like, yeah, no shit. You're in a temple. Temple-y. Yeah. And where's, <laughs> it's like, where's the brunch? Where is it? Yeah. Where Michael Paul did a lot of <laughs> other just very disrespectful things. Like, oof. It's a nightmare. Yeah. I think Twitter or Facebook, or YouTube should just eliminate him, you know, cut ties with him and make him. I'd love to see that little shit get a day job like everybody else. Like, you know, go to work and work computers all day rather than just uh, making your 500k a year by being a prick. Oh, he I makes way more the, than that. Uh, well, whatever. He should, he should go channel, to fucking prison. They took his channel away for a bit, but I give it back because YouTube yeah. is a bunch of fucking cowards. Yeah, YouTube yeah, also has the, so much money off of them. They also have the worst yeah. copyright algorithms ever. I get flagged for Box Cannon and Air on a G-String. Box been dead for 400 friggin' years. Dude, that... That shit is so public domain that it is ridiculous. That, if, so fix your shit. If YouTube, I didn't you know, suck. if I didn't know that was classical music that you just mentioned, it would sound really weird. I just got I flagged know. for box cannon on a G string. Air on a G string. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you doing on YouTube? I also got flagged for for Mazorski's Night on Bald Mountain. Well, Mazorski's been dead for like 175 years. So <laughs> box cannon. Great. Air Good job, on a YouTube. G-string. You suck. Okay. Shall we move on? Yeah. Sure. I'm angry today. Kazuo wanted to say, when are you not angry? Yeah, you mean that? Howdy, <laughs> partner. I seen you riding in on that dusty trail. Welcome to the good, the bad, and the moe. All right, good, the bad, and the moe. Let's do this as I lean awkwardly trying to adjust the, the audio levels while I talk. <laughs> new Ghost in the Shell anime will have two seasons. I didn't even know there was a new yes. Ghost in the Shell anime coming. Oh, wait, there's a new I new one? I'm so excited. A new new yeah. one. Oh, okay. Get with the program. Cool. Why are you This excited? one looks like it's based on the manga, though, and the manga is a lot different, so we'll see. <laughs> yes, Production IG president Maki Tedashima Furuta revealed at Comic-Con in San Diego that there will be a new two-season, 12 episodes apiece, show of Ghost in the Shell based on Masumune Shiro's Ghost in the Shell manga. The director... Kenji Kamiyama, who directed Standalone Complex, is going to direct the first season. Ooh. Shinji Aramaki, who directed Apple Seed, is going to do the other, but there's no release date yet. Okay. Uh, how do we feel? So, I love Ghost in the Shell, so I'm excited. Yeah, yeah sounds good to me. This, man. I'm, Very I'll, excited. I'll definitely try it. Like, I, I will never not try a Ghost in the Shell thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's been. A, how long has it been since we had the last Ghost in the Shell anime? Oh, like 10, 10 years? Seven? Uh, well, no, the new one came out, oh, and then they true. brought out the new movie, which is only a couple years ago, I think. Okay. I was thinking about like standalone conflict. Yeah, there was uh, Ghost oh, in the Shell Rise yeah. or something like that. Yeah, Arise came out. Um, I forgot 
what year that came out. It's recent though. Let's yeah. say five, five, four, four, four years, something like that. It's time for well, a the movie. new movie came out. I think just a year or two ago. Yeah, the movie. Yeah. Yeah. The the for the bad the govern the government of Japan plans to put the Pom uh, Pompoko Shrine's future in jeopardy. There is a shrine in Komatsushima in the to in the in the Tokushima Prefecture that is dedicated to Pompoko. Well, more 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 accurately, it's a, it's a Shinto shrine that's dedicated to Tanuki, which has statues from from ta from Pompoko in it, like stone statues. Well, the government plans to replace a sports facility that is near the shrine with a with a park, and part of this plan is supposedly the destruction of the shrine to make room for the park. And people weren't very happy about that. There are being petitions being signed that have been handed to the mayor of the area and the assembly speaker. And but the mayor has said that while they are while they are considering it, they have not they have not yet changed their plans. They can't guarantee that the shrine is going to be protected. So they may destroy a shrine dedicated to Pompoko, mm. which is sad. Mm. It's a bummer. There's also mm. a festival in there was a festival in Tokyo in Japan called the Summer Wonder Festival that was going to be canceled. This is the Moe, by the way. That was going to be canceled due to the Typhoon 12 that, that just ripped through Japan. Um, and if you click on the link, you guys, there are definitely a lot of images that you can enjoy from the uh, from the event. And from what I saw, it's mostly an event that is filled with like merchandise, and I, I just put a link in the chat for people watching live. It's a it's an event that has a lot of figures and stuff. It'd be kind of like if you were strolling through the Kotobukiya store in in Akihabara. So yeah. they, they had the first ever seen in this corner of the world figures set. They had tons of Ava figures with a trailer for the new Ava movie playing all day. Displays of Naruto figures that can stick on walls with magnets, like the the clones or whatever. Tons of Dragon Ball figures from the earliest Dragon Ball all the way through Dragon Ball Super, including multiple figures of Bulma riding mechs and motorcycles, which I thought was pretty sweet. sweet. Um, good Macross Frontier, Gurren Lagann, Hisone, Tomasotan, Darling and the Franks. Tons of Kantai collection figures in like gigantic sets, Persona 5 figures, huge lineups from Kotobukiya. Jojo. Jojo, <laughs> Golden Wind figures coming out before the show even is out. And tons of tons more. I can't even cover all I of them. I need this card captor sucker one because it's amazing. That was so cute, man. <laughs> all the Nanjors are so cute too. If you guys are, are if you guys are like, if you, the guys are watching live, if you guys click the link, there's so much cute stuff. Wow. <laughs> oh, they're bringing out one of Yusuke from Persona 5. I'm so yes, excited. Yeah. There's also Joker. You see the Joker figure? Yeah, I saw that one too. Yeah, it's cool shit. And there's Anne. So do you guys want to buy any of these? I yes. want the Joker figure for sure. <laughs> the question is, do I have the money for them? Joker <laughs> is pretty neat. Money is. I, weird, I need that Yusuke. <laughs> I, st I still have like all my figures and stuff in a box from when I moved. I have to like put them on my bookshelf or something. There are mm. there are two things I want to buy um, very soon. For in honor of Dragon Quest XI that's coming out, I'm gonna Durakue. buy in honor of Durakue Juichi Juichi Ban. <laughs> I'm gonna buy a my fourth like solid metal figure of. You guys have seen those figures of the slimes and oh, stuff. Yeah. There's about 15 yeah. of them in the set. They're really ridiculously expensive, but they are really nice. They're high. They're super high quality. I'm gonna buy another one of those, and I want to buy a Nendoroid of Mega Man because I just finished playing Mega Man 1 through 10 mm. in honor of Mega Man 11 that's gonna come out in October. So I'm pumped for that. And that's it. That's yeah. awesome. I These hope Thunderbolt you get it, dude. fantasy ones are cool too. Damn. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, they had like a yeah. full-on sword too. I don't know yeah. if that was from Thunderbolt Fantasy, but they, I, I did see that. No, that one's a Token Dambu one oh. down lower. Well. Looks like it's a replica of one of the Token Dambu swords, but below that is a Thunderbolt Fantasy display, and it looks really cool. The cloth looks really nice. Those are probably really expensive. <laughs> yeah, they look really good. <laughs> oh, well. It's all but expensive, I mean. If I had the money. <laughs> it's amazing the price disparity. If you if you were to like go to Kotobukiya or whatever the hell uh -huh. like, one of those multi-story figure shops in Akiba. That's where all the good shit is, right? Yeah. But they charge yeah, you. Yeah, I got. What'd you? Um, buy? I got that really, really fancy um, Natsume one where he's sitting in a tree. There, I got that one for like eighty dollars, and I bought it there for eighty dollars because on Amazon or and eBay, it's like close to four hundred dollars. Jesus, holy shit! So yeah, so did you, did you sell I it really profit? lucked out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could never. So, yeah, it's like if you, but then if you go across the street to one of the recycle shops, 
like a used shop that has figures, mm -hmm. like you're gonna. Dude. I don't know about the Natsume figure; it may have been too new or too desirable to be in a to be in mm -hmm. a figure in a recycle shop. Yeah, but you could, but like, there's like go. You can buy Goku's and shit in there for like a dollar. See, I feel like when you say recycle shop, people get the wrong idea. Like they figure it's like some small little shop where they sell a couple figures. Like no. there, there are some places that are multiple stories. Oh my god! Just full of just just a ton of figures, tens of millions of dollars yeah. of merchandise that's yeah. just figures. Yeah, just like, cages on cages on wild. cages on cages of shit to buy, dude. I mean, just ask Shang. He bought like three duffel bags. Oh my god, <laughs> dude, he could barely leave the country. <laughs> Do you think he has like a like a a room, an dedicated. enormous room that's just shelves after shelves? I think it's just his entire I would hope so. his entire house is just like shelves on the walls. Yeah, I hope he's having a good time. I got time. two in Japan. I got my Natsume and I got my Shizuo. Yeah, that's a, I just bought two Haikyuu figures and a See, whole bunch of Gachapon. I went yeah. to Japan and I was like, I don't, I don't really own figures. I'm not gonna buy. Oh figures. boy! And then I went home and I just had like a crap load of them. Yeah. Like, How did this happen? It's what happens, man. Yeah. You're like, I want that, and I want that, and I want that, and I want that. It's like you go into an ice cream shop yeah. and you want like every flavor. And they weren't that expensive either. Like a lot mm. of the ones I got were, you know, reasonably priced. Yeah. So it's cool. It's a lot of fun. So who wants to handle the uh, the trivia? I vote for one of the people that are not in the room right now. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I meant to say this, but I had water in my mouth. Yeah, I'll read it. Oh, he's thirsty now. I wonder why you're so thirsty. Well, how could that I be? I don't know. Is why that... am I so thirsty? <laughs> why, why why might that be happening? Are you also hungry? <laughs> are you eating Cheetos? I'm, I'm, I might have the munchies as well. <laughs> munchies and cotton mouth. That's weird. Weird. Who <clears throat> would do that? That's so odd. Anyway. <laughs> As we do every week on the podcast, we have a trivia question that we'll that we'll ask so you can answer while we take a break. Uh, wait, no. Oh God, we fucked God. up. Oh, God. 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 No. <laughs> I always fuck this up. Anyway, he is. Uh, you're, you're okay. You're amongst friends. All right. all right. Anyway, all right. Reset. Reset. Um, on the website aapodcast.com, we have a trivia question you can answer if you scroll all the way to the bottom. Uh, this week's answer to the question that's on the website is how is moving castle when they're making the bacon egg and the bacon and eggs using the califer? Uh, I think califer is so cute, by the way. It's calcifer, but calcifer. Cal Did you say it's caliper? Just, it, someone wrote caliper. It, on it's this a document. typo on the doc. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> Mitz likes to do that sometimes. He'll throw a typo. That's in. right. Blame it on me. <laughs> just yeah. to mess with you. Go ahead. Just blame it on me. Um, me. there are too many uh correct answers to read out everyone's username. Uh, but the winner of this week is Nisekoi Maiko. Oh. Um, but yeah. So this week, uh, the current theme is anime food. Um, after today, we'll have the website updated for the next question. If you just go to aapodcast.com and scroll to the bottom, you'll find it. And, and you can that, win fabulous prizes. You can yes. win fabulous prizes. Oh, yes. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, following that, we're going to go on break. And while we go on break, you can answer the in-show weekly trivia question, which is place these wait, place these Hayao Miyazaki words in the order in which they were created. Uh, Spirit Away, Princess Mononoke, The Wind Rises, and Future Boy Conan. I said words. I'm at works. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and we'll give you the answer after oh my break. god oh, it's so god. great all right guys we'll see you in a few minutes with kitchen where, where we will be relocated to Woo. the kitchen let the scrambling begin yes <laughs> Everybody, this is Mitsugi, and it's time for your first anime news break. Leading us off today, we have some news relating to the tragic natural disasters that had been plaguing Japan throughout the summer, which included large-scale flooding and also Typhoon Number 12, which also hit Japan. Manga artist Kenshi Hirokane is going to be helping to alleviate the reconstruction costs of these areas that were affected by the natural disasters by working with a local brewery to donate partial profits from the sales of the liquor in which he's contributing artwork on the bottles to help stimulate sales. 
Rainfall began to fall in July and caused widespread damages throughout the throughout that area of the country, which included Hirokane's hometown of Iwakuni in the Yamaguchi Prefecture. Lots of homes and businesses were damaged. Many people died as a result of the of landslides. The brewery Asahi Shuzo is located in Iwakuni and found itself unable to ship its, its alcohol after the area lost power for three days. So lots of disasters, but everyone is pitching in here and there to help alleviate the cost of the repairs. So hopefully Japan will, will be able to recover swiftly. Next up, we have a very strange news story. A Canadian cosplayer was arrested in Japan on, on a suspicion of false marriage. The Tokyo police arrested cosplayer Shannon Danell Jean Wong on July 11th on suspicion of falsifying a marriage. She had a student visa which allowed her to live in Japan from 2012 to 2016. However, Wan has been variously reported as a restaurant worker and also a sex industry worker since then. She met a man named Sasaki, who was a construction worker in Japan. She, Wong allegedly approached Sasaki in June 2016 to propose a fake marriage with no intention of living with Sasaki as a married couple. She agreed to pay him $7,000 around six thousand three hundred dollars and also around three hundred dollars per month in order to maintain the arrangement but she was found out through the tokyo Im immigration bureau and has since been arrested so that's a crazy story for you right there next up rpg game uh, jean yong sword is getting a tv anime the uh studio dean has announced that a tv adaptation of of Jean Yuan Sword role-playing game franchise is going to be getting a television anime series. The director is Hiroshi Watanabe, who was the director of Italia, The Beautiful World. The series composition is by Katsuhiko Takayama, who worked on Taku Nomi. Of course, once again, it's Studio Dean. So if you're a fan of this type of this property, the anime is going to be a collaboration between TV Tokyo, Soft Star, and Nada Holdings. It's going to be on television soon, so look out for that. Next up, Pokemon Go is having its two-year anniversary. And as such, the popular mobile game is going to be sending 24 people in pairs of two, so 12 groups each, on a trip to catch one of four exclusive Pokemon in a region throughout the world. The trip prizes include a tour of Los Angeles to capture Tauros, Sydney to capture Genghis Khan, London to capture Mr. Mime, and Hawaii to capture Corsola. So if you are a huge fan of Pokemon Go, you can players need to follow the Japanese Pokemon Go Twitter account in order to enter and win the prize. So check look out for that and maybe you'll be lucky enough to travel around the world to not only see the world but also to capture rare Pokemon for Pokemon Go. This is Mitsugi and this was your anime news break. Now, as always, it's time to get back to the podcast. After parties, hobby addicts, hunt episodes. After parties, hobby addicts, hunt episodes. After parties, hobby addicts, hunt episodes. What in the world are you two doing? I'm trying to sleep here. It's midnight. We're using Mandy's arcane power to do a content prayer dance. Yeah, we're hoping the content gods bless us with thrilling entertainment for the fans. Content prayer dance. You know, there's a much easier way to make better content. How about starting with studying our vast archive of additional content on aaapodcast.com. Oh, I already have. I mean, it's only seven bucks a month for almost eight additional episodes every month. That's less than a dollar per extra episode and super easy to get to. Just got to type aapodcast.com slash join to become a member. You went through the whole archive. It's hundreds of hours. Well, senpai, anything is possible. If you believe. I think I'll just leave you two alone. Hey, is he gone yet? Yeah, ready. Yeah. After parties, hobby addicts, anti episodes. After parties, hobby addicts, anti episodes. The Anime Addicts Anonymous Podcast presents Kazuo vs. The Cat Bus. Who do you yeah. got for number one? I have the cat bus from my neighbor Totoro. Chichi Kokoyama Hospital. Okay. That's where the cat bus goes. Yeah, but like, what, what are the cat bus's combat abilities? It has the most powerful oh. headlights in history on its eyeballs. It could blind you drastically with its eyeballs. That's the it can worst. Run, it can run on telephone telephone wires. You know how nimble that is? That agility. Right, such agility. Such grace. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Does the cat bus not have about 10 legs? 
Does it have 10 legs? Yes, true. Do, do cats have claws? Yeah. How many claws does a cat have on every paw? Oh, I don't know. Like It's five. Five? Okay. That is 50 <laughs> razor sharp blades coming but at look you. look at it. it it's, has like no... a, it's like a bowling ball covered in butcher knives. I, 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 it's coming at you. First ass. <laughs> yeah, that cat bus is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> that son of a bitch is coming at you. <laughs> it does look terrifying. It's literally <laughs> screaming all the time. <laughs> It would take you to the Shichi Kokoyama Hospital after it beats your ass. <laughs> it's yeah, gonna it beat your ass and take you to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. And now, back to the podcast. All right, welcome back to the podcast. Podcast episode 433 of the Animatics Animus podcast. Kazu is waving hey from the kitchen. All right, let's do a sound check. Check, check, one, two, <laughs> coming through. Okay, he's, he's in the kitchen with his hat. I am impressed with this level of production, Mitsuki. I have no idea what's going on. I can't see anything, like, on camera, so hopefully this looks okay. Just cook this damn food, baby. <laughs> I also have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to cooking. <laughs> All right, so you'll recall back... Oh, oh um, uh, who wants to read the intro trivia question? We can't forget that. Um, I can. So the trivia question before the break was place these Hayao, um, Hayao Miyazaki works in the order in which they were created. Spirit Away, Princess Mononoke, The Wind Rises, and Future Boy Conan. The answer is Future Boy Conan, Princess Mononoke, Spirited Away, then The Wind Rises. Okay. Did you? Who, oh, yeah. who, which one of you guys knew that? Um, uh, I did not know that. I did not know that. If, if I've I seen them all, it, but maybe. I did not put them in I, order. I kind of guess Future Boy Conan was the oldest. Was that? Oh, was that's that definitely 80s? the oldest. If Future Boy Conan came out in like 1978. Holy shit! Yeah, it's it's really damn good though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, wasn't yeah, sure I, I could also the... kind of guess that, but I didn't know it off the top of my head. Like, yeah, I wasn't sure about Mononoke and Spirited Away. I wasn't sure which one of those was older. Mm-hmm. Same. All right, but... so we do have Kazo in the kitchen, but we, we have do. we have something else delightful for you. Before that, we do have Mandy's manga minute. So. Yeah. Mandy, are you ready for your for your manga minute? While well, hopefully um, Kazo has begun to be, begin cooking. Oh, oh okay. very quickly before we start, I just wanted to I wanted to toss this out because I I didn't want people to get the wrong idea. Uh, for Mandy's manga minute, I'm not trying to recommend these to everybody. These aren't like my personal favorites or anything. I my I am just finding ones that either I have read only a book of, or maybe I do love them. But I didn't want you to get the wrong idea thinking that I'm saying that everybody should read all of these. <laughs> like They're obviously not going to be for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I, you're just presenting a tapestry of manga that's available out there. Yes, yes. A I, tapestry of manga. Oh my I'm just yeah, hoping that. that you I find that. I did. something hey guys, guys, new to read. And to it's do? possible that I might suggest something that I've only read a book of or that I think is okay, but somebody else might really love it. So don't get the wrong idea and think that these are all like my favorites. <laughs> yeah, so use your discretion. Basically, yeah. listen to the description. If it sounds like it's going to be triggering to you or too hard, then don't read it. I can't stop laughing at Kazu. Yeah, so, 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 so just a quick note before we start Mandy's Manga Minute. I we, don't know what I'm supposed to do. You are going to be getting fo Foley effects from the kitchen the whole time. And Kazuo, can you hear me? Oh, I hear you for sure. Kaz Kazuo. Yes. You need, to, you need to start cooking the rice. Do I, do I boil water? Is don't, that what I do? <laughs> remember the the blue bag of rice next to the oh, next to the fire nice. extinguisher that has the instructions <laughs> on the back. Okay. All right. <laughs> you yeah. must you must you must remember you must boil the rice. But like in the water. The wa wait, in the water? Yes, you must have water to boil. Okay. You don't you can't <laughs> boil air. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm gonna put like. Uh, All righty. How many cups of water? Just read the back of the. Remember, I told you to put enough water in the pot to submerge the rice and then ah, boil it, okay. then reduce it to a simmer. You got to read the instructions. All right, are you ready for Mandy's mom? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> yep. And now let's take a minute for the manga minute with Mandy. Make this the best Mandy's manga minute of all time. Oh, I don't know about that. Don't, that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of pressure. I have faith. But <laughs> Mandy's Manga Minute is where I take a minute to tell you about a manga and hopefully help you find something new to read. And this week, I am doing The Demon Prince of Momochi House. On her 16th birthday, 
Orphan Himari Mom uh, Momochi inherits her ancestral estate that she's never seen. Momochi House exists on Did the barrier between ancestral? the human and spiritual realms, and Himari is meant to act as a guardian between the two worlds. But on the day she moves in, she finds three handsome squatters already living in the house, and one seems to have already taken over her role. Um, when I was choosing this one, I was deciding what to do for my next manga minute, and I decided, and I realized I haven't chosen any shoujo mangas yet. So I decided to just go ahead and throw this one out there. Um, so Demon Prince of Momochi House is a supernatural shoujo manga by Aya Shoto, and it first started publishing in 2013. It was picked up for an English translation in Viz Media in 2015. Um, it's still ongoing with currently 12 volumes out in English. Uh, you can find them both physically, uh, in physical print and digitally. The story is very similar to Kamisama Kiss in a way, with a female protagonist who is thrown into a world of yokai and begins to develop romantic feelings for one of them. Um, personally, I found Himari, the main character in this one, to be a more enjoyable protagonist than um, Nanami from Kamisama Kiss, because Himari keeps her love interest on a far more subtle level than Nanami does, and I, I just find her more likable. But um, I think Aya's artwork in this book is very, very beautiful. It's uh, filled with a lot of eye candy. All of the character designs are extremely attractive. Um, Aoi, who is Himari's love interest, is a very is very sweet. It's nice to have a shoujo manga where the main guy is not a snarky ass to the protagonist right off the bat, uh, because that happens. That tends to happen a lot from the ones that I've read. But um, there's also a lot of mystery surrounding him, since Aoi is also a yokai known as a Nui. But he was previously human, and through some incident, he is now bound to the house and cannot leave. So throughout the story, Kimari dives into Aoi's past, trying to discover how this happened to Aoi, and also how she may be able to save him. So this is, it's a very, very simple story. I would not recommend this to someone who's looking for like a very deep manga they can sink their teeth into. But um, if you're looking for a very light shoujo manga with some supernatural yokai themes and very, very pretty character designs, uh, give this one a shot. Um, I'm a sucker for yokai, and I found the characters to be very likable, so I've kept up with it. But um, yeah, it's not something that I would recommend to everybody. <laughs> I'm making such a mess. So, yep. Thanks, Mandy. No problem. I how we how we I doing? I need some more shoujo in my life, honestly. I, don't I have some more to recommend. Uh, I, I have on my list for uh, future manga minutes. So, Mandy is an unending well of manga knowledge. I know, it's ridiculous. All right, two things, Kazuo. One, put the camera down a tiny bit so we can see you cutting things. Oh, okay, sure. Um, hold on. <coughs> I, I don't know if it'll Let's hope he doesn't hurt down. himself. Well, Do we have Band-Aids? If we want to go further time? down, yeah, they need to back it up. Yeah, yeah. Knife, hold on, I, a little, I get a little twee in Is my chest. You know? A twee? The mic's in the way. You might want to push the mic back. Oh, my God, you're killing me, Smalls. Well, I'm just trying right. to... Is just that trying better? To make this, that's better. So, Do we have bandages? We We don't. Oh no, we are doomed. So, he is going to bleed to death. It's going to be a very red curry, huh? Rip. So I cut this onion in half, and then I peeled off a bunch of the skin on this yeah. one half. Oh, there we go. Di cut, cut the onion up, dice it. Be please be careful with that knife. It will it will cut you like butter. I don't know how to dice onions. <laughs> that is a brand new Cutco Samurai knife. That you, will You could probably cut your finger off How do you with dice that. onions? You oh, golden curry. I love that brand. You go, you go lengthwise, and then I turn it, and then I do it. And then I do it the other way, like yeah. Make, like, you want to make it like Manhattan, like a grid. Yeah. So, um, Kazuo is, Kazuo is cooking golden curry with chicken, and I see that he has already put the water in the pot to boil with the yes. rice in it. And when that water hits the boil, you definitely should reduce it to a simmer for the number of minutes that the package says. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Sure thing. I'm just cutting up this <laughs> onion. No Your kitchen is gonna be a mess. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. So, like, we used to do this with Chiaki. You guys, do you guys remember when Chiaki used to do yeah. this? Mm -hmm. So, Chiaki... I know when you guys did the nabe pot. Right, exactly. The nabe pot was really good because you could get the camera. I don't know right if down. I remember. I, I, cause like, this, despite what everyone believes, I haven't been listening to the podcast for that much time compared to everyone that's like the main crowd. I remember a cooking thing, but I don't. I don't think it was the pot. So now that we know we can do this, we may do this more often. I may go in there and cook next time. But um, when, yeah. when Chiaki, I think Chiaki did takoyaki, she did katsu, and she did mm. nabe. The nabe is probably the best because you can kind of get the camera right down on top of the nabe it's pot. Boiling. Yeah. Uh, it's boiling. Reduce it to low. There you go, bud. Right. You got this. Oh, oh, Kazu. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. The way you're holding that knife, dude. <laughs> yeah, that knife is... 
It's boiling over. <laughs> Is he crying right now from the it's onions? It's boiling over. <laughs> Lift it off the heat. Put it, take it down. Oh to, no! Take it down to low. <laughs> Okay, well, this is all part of the fun. So, so when Chiaki was doing this, she actually knew how to cook, right? This right. is more. Uh, yeah. This is more controlled chaos. Watching Kazo destroy my kitchen. <laughs> Hopefully not really. So, all right, it's not boiling over, so I put it back on there. Yeah, put it, put it, okay, put the heat good. on low. Do I have to cut up this whole onion? Yes. Like I just did half of it, and that's a lot of onions. Yeah. Well, it's onions cooked down. So, like, oh when no. Them, when you cook that onion down, it's going oh, to. God damn it. Oh boy, it's boiling over again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Guys, I, so lost. Lost. I, I, I love you, to... you for doing this because this is all at your expense. This is no, you, you're Ka not winning. Uh, Kazu, I want you to know the people in the chat are enjoying it, so they are. Thanks. They are enjoying this, so you're doing a good service for the viewers. <clears throat> so this is so stressful. Ha Mandy and Enzo, have you guys ever cooked curry before? Are you, have you ever done what Kazu is trying to do? No, I've never done curry. I I used to cook with, when I was younger. I used to cook with my mom because she was like, "I'm not raising a damn son that can't cook." Hey. So, <laughs> which is true. Uh, so <laughs> I used to cook a lot when I was younger with her. I don't really cook anymore. I kind of miss it. The last time I cooked was for Friendsgiving when my friends got together and shared a dinner. We do that every year, so um, that's the only time I ever cook. Did you set a I've timer? Made curry. Oh, oh, hold on. Oh. <laughs> no, I took it off the heat. I, I've made you curry. Put I've it made back. That. Oh my god. Put it back on the heat. Put it on low. I set the timer for the for what was it? Twenty minutes. Mm. There he goes. I hear. I hear it going. You know what's amazing is that we had the cables to get all this shit into my kitchen already. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, nice. <laughs> all, right. all right. So yeah, what you were saying, Mandy. Oh, I, I was just saying that I have made that brand before of curry, um, but I've never made. Rice inside of a pot, though. I have a rice, like cooker. So, <laughs> yeah. So I think I've only, I've only ever done, like, cooked rice inside of my cooker and bag rice. <laughs> yeah. So I had the option of getting instant rice, which would have been very easy for Kazuo, but it wasn't real Japanese rice. So I spent the extra ten dollars mm. and bought a bag of short grain sushi rice, that, yeah. you know, should be what should be what you know you would expect. Hey, I figured out how to dice onions, guys. Just please, God, be careful with that knife. I don't want you to underestimate how sharp that knife is. Um, you could probably cut. <laughs> you could probably cut a quarter in half with it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. right, so I usually the use the cut. Nishiki sushi rice. What do I do now? Oh, put these in the other thing. When I make uh, when I make rice. He's going. Yeah, wait, Kazu, you diced that second half pretty well. He's dude. doing a good job. I figured it that. out after the first half. I really fucked up yeah. the first half, but the second. All right. Half. Okay. Oh, so, God, it's oh, oh. Over again. put it on low, it's... or you might have put too much water in it. So, like, to, to me, making curry is a lot like making beef stew. You're basically going to mm. cook, cook the meat and cook the vegetables a little bit before you put it into the stew. Then you're going to put it in a pot with the curry, and which is the curry is a lot like this, the beef, the actual like chicken broth or beef stock or whatever you're using. And then you basically just let it all cook till it's done. And then you serve it with rice as opposed to noodles or whatever you would put on put or whatever you would serve with your beef stew. So Japanese curry is a lot like beef stew. It's not that different. I love it. It's super good. Yeah. I mean, beef stew is actually a little tougher because you're usually cooking with like a red wine and a lot of spices. Whereas a Japanese curry, the actual golden curry, I, I wanted to get apple Vermont curry. I thought I had it, but I did, but I don't. And they don't have it at the grocery mm. store. Question, how do I cut this potato? God damn it. It keeps boiling over and it won't go any lower. Well, you need to, you need to take some of the water out of it. Or maybe you're low, or maybe you're reducing the heat on the wrong burner. So no, I'm definitely on the right burner. <laughs> well, then pour some water out of that, but put, but do not put the rice in my sink. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so like it's just it's golden curry, but all the spices and stuff you need to make it taste good is already in the little blocks. So rather than having to like have the exact amount of basil and the exact amount of like yeah. oregano, you just put the blocks in and it's done. Yep. So how do I, mm -hmm. how do I cut up a potato, guys? You wash it first oh. in the sink. And then you cut it with a knife. <laughs> he, he's trying his best. I love him. He's so adorable right now. <laughs> I know. He's so kawaii, John. Yeah, that golden curry comes in like little cubes, doesn't it? That you yeah. like, bust out. Yeah. It's not, I mean, I think actually, I actually think that like beef, like beef, beef stew, like chicken broth or beef stock comes in cubes also, like beef bouillon. Yeah. So you can now hear Emmy is legit cutting. <laughs> Yeah, this, is, this is not pretend for the people in the live the people in the live chat know they're watching a live video feed of this man cooking curry yeah 
At least he this is not make believe. He's not gonna have to cut the carrots though, because I got pre-cut carrots, baby carrots. So I made. Oh, you so you're a merciful man. I am, but don't forget about the chicken. Oh shit! I forgot the chicken, which is probably somewhere. So. Yeah. So make, um. Make sure you wash your hands profusely when handling the chicken. Okay. Do you have any curry? Yes. I, yeah. Before and at, well, after you use handle the chicken, wash your hands. This potato is not going well, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you. Well, you just cut it until it's cut. So, I don't have very many. Admittedly, I don't have very many like cooking implements in my apartment, my condo. I have I have a couple of nice appliances, but I don't have like a potato slicer or you know whatever the hell people use. You know, there's no device that you just kind of stick the potato in and you slam it down and it makes perfectly perfectly sliced potatoes. We're going straight up. Um, I see straight up just kitchen knives, so old school style. So. Let's see. We got some. We got some comments here in the chat. This is great. Don't remove water. That that throws off the ratio of, and rice won't cook through. Well, what's it's too late? So what's the un, over under on crunchy rice versus mushy rice? Oh, hmm. oh, that's a good bet. That's a good bet. We yeah. should do that. Over under on crunchy versus soft. Yeah, Chibi Rob wants to know. What do you guys think? I'm I'm going to bet it's soupy. Damn it. I'm too. I'm also betting it's soupy. Yeah. I'm gonna. S- Say that he burns it to the bottom of the pan, the bottom. Oh yeah. So uh, that's a possibility. So in uh, at least I don't know if other Hispanic cultures say this, but in in Dominican families, we actually on purpose burn rice at the bottom of the pan, and we call that kong oh. kong. And oh. that's just like hmm. that's just something. So like we cook the rice, and then we peel the bottom layer that got stuck to the pan, and that's just like an added side. It's just crunchy rice. Right? So wow. We, mm-hmm. oh, no. co- we call it con- con- con. Mm-hmm. I've done that on accident before. <laughs> Dude, I feel like this is way too much <laughs> but, potatoes uh, and onions for this pan. That doesn't like hurt your teeth, though? Well, you could take some of them out. It, we, I usually just eat it with, like, mayo or something. Mm. I don't know. Okay. I forget. Yeah. Enzo and Interesting. Hear me. I did not get that. I wonder, Kazu, have you ever heard that term, like, con- con? like just There's... like the, the, the crunchy rice at the bottom of a pan? Yeah, they can't. Yeah, he can't. You guys can't hear him, can you? No, and I think our. Um, I was before, but not anymore. Yeah, I think our video also has a really big delay. Yeah, it's a very big delay. <laughs> what am I doing with these carrots? The carrots yeah, are done, man. You lag. just put them in there. You don't have to cut them or anything. They're already cut. They're already tiny carrots. So yeah, so I mean, actually, Enzo, that's an interesting point you made about the burn, the burn stuff on the bottom. I've heard of people leaving that stuff there while they cook to sort of protect the rest of the food from being burned because it's like the hottest parts of the bottom of the pan. So if you have some burned stuff on the bottom, don't ever remove it because all that does is put burned food into your food and then you'll get more burned food because the bottom is exposed again. So people say if you do burn something, leave it there so that you create like a shield for the rest of the food. So interesting. So does this still apply? Because <laughs> the the pans I see here, they look like nonstick. So are you? Do you just not worry about that anymore? Uh, well, he's not gonna cut those mini carrots at all. <laughs> they're baby carrots already. This so. is Kazo, please big, make though. sure you wash your hands after you touch this chicken. Yeah, okay? Yes. Yeah. And every you you wash your hands and everything that touched the chicken, wash all of it too. What am yeah. I doing with this? I don't even know what to do with this chicken. You cut it into small uh-huh. pieces. Cut it into small pieces and then put it into the pan with the rest of it. And if you think you have too many potatoes or onions, you can always take some out. You're the chef, man. You got to use your discretion. So, yeah. Do you have, do you have curry places in New York that we could go to potentially? Yeah, totally. Um, th- there's not. I like go. I think we have a go go curry, which is pretty solid. Oh, I love go go curry. Yeah, so we can definitely go there. Um, I'm pretty sure we have one. Pretty sure. Um, if we don't, I actually, when some of the mods visited me last time, I was with, uh, Frigimon Fanatic and Vcom yeah. from the discord, get to know them. They're great. Uh, we went to a curry place and they visited me last time too. Oh um, my go, go curry. There's plenty. There's plenty of places. Yeah. Go, go curry is good. It's good. I like Koku Ichiban better, but go, go curry is solid. Do they use the metal, pl- the metal plates and shit in there? Yeah, it's 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 what it's whatever you think like Gogo Curry is. Yeah, it's yeah, just I, like it's just a good one. I've been I've been to Gogo Curry a few times because it's in like they're scattered across Akiba, so you can, you know, drop in for some curry whenever you want. Um, so Hugo Minot says he'll put a cool five dollars down on mushy rice and soupy curry. And yeah. uh, let's see here. Did, did he hear me when I said about the washing your hands profusely? <clears throat> I'm washing my hands right now. Yeah, he's here. All right. Great. 
I was worried about you, baby. The, the only the only audio not <laughs> connecting right now is he he can you cannot hear him speaking. He can hear you. You cannot hear him unless you unmute. Oh, okay. Unless they unmute. No, I can hear him. Mitz. I can hear him talk. Oh, they say really? Oh. I cannot. Well, they have to unmute you, Mitz, on the Discord. Or no. do you have the audio on the video on? Uh, no, I not... I have so on Discord I have the sound of Mitsugi coming through. Oh, Yo, okay, okay, so okay. There's, there's, I yeah, yeah, yeah. there's way too many onions yeah. and potatoes in here, but if I take them out, where am I supposed to put them? Just put them in a. Put them back on the cutting board or throw them out. It doesn't matter to me. Throw them, I would just throw them out because the, the cutting board has all this salmonella board. shit on it. This, is, <laughs> this whole thing is just a fun experiment. I'm not worrying about you wasting any of the food. It's just one potato. You know, whatever. So, uh, just so you guys know, I bought every ingredient for this with... Well, chicken and rice is expensive because sushi rice is crazy expensive. So... Mm. I would say that you're using about twenty dollars worth of ingredients, and most of that is the chicken breast, because even though the even though the bag of rice is not that big, it was ten dollars, and but you're only using f f like a sixth of it, so you're really only using like two bucks worth of rice. So altogether, you can make you only you really only need a, a pack of golden curry, which is four bucks, admittedly, because it's import, and you need carrots, you need so onions, you need potatoes, you need rice and you need chicken and that's all you need do it's I, not a whole do lot do i put the chicken in with the potatoes and the onions and the carrots read the box that the curry comes in for the instructions okay now, every instruction you need is on is, in, is on that box stir fry meat and vegetables with oil in a large skillet mm -hmm. okay so I, now i only cut up one chicken breast because there's only two chicken breasts in here and they're both massive i think it's fine okay yeah, I think that's fine too. The proportion's pretty good. Do not throw the other chicken breast out though. Put that in. Put that in his my bag in my yeah, drawer. Yeah, no, I, put I, it I just fridge. left that in the thing. So. Okay. And if you think there's too many onions and potatoes, just take some out. I did. Let's see more comments here. We got um, hentai owner said he didn't see he or she did not see oil added. I put it in early. I put it in beforehand for him. He uh, didn't trust me. The heat on the frying pan is not on. Says Burtman Four. <coughs> Dark Saber says Salmonella time. <laughs> <laughs> Dark saber. Taunt That's so savage. <laughs> Tonto Duende says this dish should be named the Angry Monk Special. Let's see here. Um, where's Neil? He should be begging loudly right now. That's true. Where's my cat? Where is your cat? Where's Neil? Oh, no. Where's the the mascot should be parading this man right now. Yeah, he should be in there like going after some chicken. Hey, at hey, him. hey, Kai yeah. Kazuo, we'll do me a favor yeah. and call Neil. Hey, Neil. Oh, there he is. He's sitting on the at the next to the piano. Neil, what's up, buddy? If you want to, you can give him a tiny piece of chicken. Um. So what? Yeah, it's, just, it's raw chicken. Cats are cats' digestive systems are meant to eat raw food. They mm -hmm. kill they kill raw oh, shit in the wild all the time. Duh. Just put this over. Yeah, duh. Okay. Sorry, I, I just so, I, I'm, I'm like too. I'm way too under to like have to have not had that sh so shake let's, me to the let's, core. Let's let's catch up here real quick. <laughs> okay, I've got the rice simmering. Yes. For twenty minutes, so which is about eight more minutes. Yep. And then I've just put all the vegetables in the pan. And I put that on high, which I'm going to do for five minutes. Okay. I, you, may, you may want to kind of grab the handle of the, of the frying pan and shuffle it around and, to get the oil covering the whole bottom just to get it moving. And maybe do that periodically as you're cooking so it doesn't stick. And if you want to, you could grab a spatula or a spoon and kind of stir it up. Be careful because that oil is going to spit at you a little. I've got the lid on it. Well, okay. Where is the spatula? There's a glass container behind the knives. It has all that shit in it. Let's see more comments from the chat. Uh, you realize you should have done a dry run beforehand. Nope, Captain Avatar, that would take the fun out. <laughs> the point of all this is to watch our, our man here struggle. This ma you're, 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 you're watching a man cook a dish that is, like, way over his head. He's doing a good job, but Kazuo told me today that his crowning achievement was mac and cheese. So... Oh no! He is doing. He's he is working with multiple ingredients, three different pots on the stove. This man, don't forget to boil the water in the pot that you're gonna put the the ingredients in. Oh, I forgot. Otherwise, that. you're gonna be sitting around waiting. That's okay. the big pot in the back. Okay. Yep. How much water am I supposed to put in there? Well, I think it says on the on the curry box. But you've but you're using way Sweet more quarter cups. You're using way more ingredients than you. Uh, then it probably a calls for so use a little more water than you than you're supposed to. Bert man in the, from the chat is trying to help you. He says take all the veggies and place in a bowl, heat the pan with oil, stir fry chicken when no surface pink remains. Add veggies. Well, 
Well, Bert, man, too late. <laughs> we appreciate that, but if he but if he cooks in if he cooks the skillet with the lid on for five minutes, it's gonna it's gonna cook the chicken anyway. So oh he oh he says oh damn too late. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> yeah. So let's see here. More comments from the chat. Hmm. Chipotle is probably watching from T Tonto Duende. Bertman says, quit stirring with the knife. You're going to ruin it. Yes. Well, no, these are pretty nice knives. Um, let's see here. I think Neil is afraid. That's why he's not in the kitchen. <laughs> Dark Saber says, Neil is off the camera supervising. Yo, shouts, shouts out to, Nef to uh, Neferton because he or she hit me up on the Discord and I was like, and just did, made a Critical Role reference to Victor, who's miss a character in Critical Role who's missing a finger and was like, Damn, whole castle doesn't fucking become a victor for early A podcast. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I love you for that reference, dude. <laughs> at, at, the, at the end of your five minutes, Kazuo, make sure you cut a piece of that chicken in half and make sure it's not it doesn't have any pink left inside of it. Oh, I mean, the, the chicken is entirely pink. Yes, well, that's because it's raw. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because it's raw right now. But, uh, but after five minutes on high, it may be not pink. So you probably want to check it. I can see it steaming up, so I know it's getting heat. It is getting heat, yep. but I feel like it's not going to get cooked in five minutes. Hentai owner would like you to add mac and cheese in there <laughs> with it. Ew. Uh, so uh, just random random uh, sidebar. Do you guys know the channel How To Basic on YouTube? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So recently How To Basic did a How To Make Ramen video. Do you guys watch that one? No. Oh, shit. There's no way they did that. Dude, it was so <laughs> ridiculous. The, the funny thing about it is that, like, it's it's a 10-minute video, and, like, for eight minutes, it was legit, like, a ramen recipe video to the point where I was like, wait, is he really going to, like, is this the one? Like, is this the one time he's going to make a normal how-to video? And then it just goes, but bonkers it's i'm so watching it now it goes <laughs> fucking insane. if that's sticking to the bottom Kazo, put more oil in it but if you leave yes. the lid yeah. i was gonna i was gonna you, say more oil would probably help with the, with the heat distribution too but if you leave the if you leave the lid on the water the natural water from the vegetables and the, and the chicken are going to come out under the bottom so that's <laughs> a lot of oil okay whatever Oh shit, Astro! You watch Astrophysics in the Astrophysics chat. Astrophysics is here. Oh no! He's been gone for a while. <laughs> Wait, but he's back. I, I did not know that Astro watched Critical Role. Astro, dude. you've 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 come well, back at a very strange time. Hugo Minot <laughs> says this whole cooking stream should be called should be titled "Oh damn, too late." <laughs> <laughs> and so, I right now that I'm watching so a video good. and he just keeps putting ramen noodles. <laughs> 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 How, so, so crazy. How, how could a cooking channel cook ramen? It takes like, I mean. It's great. No, Mitsuki, it should Mitsuki, take like I don't think, you, I don't think you understand the, what the channel How this To is Basic fantastic. is. fantastic. Okay, I, I you, haven't watched it, so yeah, you're, you're all right. All right, so the channel How To Basic is a, it's like a bait and switch channel. So like it'll be like how to make ramen. And then like for, you know, like for 70% of the video, it's like actually making what they're saying they're going to make. And and then it just goes off the rails. And usually it involves just like throwing the food all over the place and like rolling in it and like putting his feet in the food. It's fucking insane. It is a massive mountain of ramen right now. Yes. It's huge. <laughs> so Kazuo, the chat the and chat is the, <laughs> the, the the members of the chat are coaching you as we do this. It's kind of Lord. it's kind of charming. Bertman says regarding the rice, if at twenty minutes the water is still not all gone, keep cooking it. Okay, yeah, I was thinking that same thing. Sure you were. Yeah. <laughs> no, Listen, it, it Kazo has natural instincts, guys. Okay. <laughs> ne Nepri says, I think that Neil is afraid, and that's why he isn't in the kitchen. <laughs> he's not even Neil has literally he's sitting on the chair over there. He stood up and turned around and faced the wall. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> he doesn't about even want to look at me right now. If you call him and hold he's so if, ashamed if, of if you. If you call him and hold chicken up, he will come into the kitchen and meow at you though. And that might be cute for people listening. I don't know if you want me to do that. I, I do. Might, I'm telling might... you to cut a tiny piece of chicken off, call him, and drop it on the floor. I might accidentally kill your cat. and I'll really That is cat. impossible. Cats can eat raw chicken all day. Um, Bcom says, how is Mitsugi's apartment still intact? Well, there is a fire extinguisher on the wall If you get, you can see next to the wooden cutting board that I have put there on purpose just in case. So let's see here. What do we got here in the kitchen? We've got Kazuo has... Hey, Neil, <clears throat> come here. Look, I got some chicken. Oh, here he comes. 
Come on, guys. Oh, he's looking at me. Kazo, they're yelling at you to stir this damn thing. Make man. a kissing stir noise with his lips. Right, hold on, let me stir this. Oh god, it's boiling over. Oh, geez. You can oh, hear god. it. Oh boy. Oh, that sounds dangerous. I'm not sure which of the three pots is boiling over, but. Oh boy, right. stir. They say so, stir. Yeah, the chicken's all done. Stir. I think, and it's all white. So I'm gonna. Oh god, hold on. <laughs> it looks like it's burning. <laughs> Cut, take one of those chicken pieces out. I'm I gotta boil the water. This is chaos. To put the Dude, I picked the best episode to be under for the first time. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, Kazo, when you when you think the chicken is done, take a piece out, put it on the cutting board, cut it in half, and look at it. If it has pink in the side of it, it's not done. Okay. You cannot eat. Pick, you cannot eat a, pink chicken. Pick a thick piece, a thick one, a chicken, thicker one. You may know this, but chicken is not beef. You can't. Where, where are your forks? Well, pull some drawers out. <laughs> so. Six six people simultaneously wrote stir. <laughs> Stirring is needed. Stir that. Stir. If Someone curry said fails, they found... he can still make mac and cheese. After all, Someone said they saw black carrots. Uh, yeah, I saw them too. Burnt <laughs> the, to the bottom of the pan. Okay, oh, the God. Chicken that is not heat pink. Is... The chicken is all white. You must like. cut the chicken in half. I did. Oh, okay. And it's all white. I would, I would pick a bigger piece to test. Yeah, he's right. Bigger piece. Oh my god, you guys are killing me. Well, if you eat raw chicken, you're gonna spend the next day throwing. Don't. It out. I don't want you to die. You. Fuck. If you put something on the cutting board, don't put it back in there. <laughs> I oh didn't. man. All right, I'm not that dumb. So icy rose comes in. He wants to see how things have progressed. Well. Well, I see. I don't okay. know what to tell you. I just you, cut man. the biggest chicken piece in half, and it's all white. Okay, then you're good. You're safe. That's dope. Good shit, dude. That's. Good. I hear That's a timer going off. Chaos is unfolding. All right, that was the rice timer, but I'm going to let it go a couple more minutes. Is there still water in it? Yeah. Okay. Definitely so, don't eat anything you put on that cutting board. People say, do not use the same cutting board, salmonella. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the water is boiling now. Don't put anything on the cutting board back into the food. I'm going to put... The I don't think he hears me. I heard you. <laughs> so All right, I'm excited. I'm excited. To... This is the this is it. Why don't you hold that pan up to the camera so we can take a look at that? <laughs> so burnt. <laughs> <laughs> How am I gonna put this in there without killing myself? Oh no. Uh, well, that's why we're here to watch you. <laughs> So here we go. Oh, He's dear. about to pour this pan full of a million ingredients into oh this boiling God. pot of water. <laughs> you can try to leave the burn parts out, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's the bottom of the pan. And put that pan in the sink. Chibi Rob said, don't be a baby. Put that stuff right back in there. Salmonella builds character. <laughs> Salmonella builds character. <laughs> so, <laughs> the bottom of that so, pan. So, oh so, so for those of you that aren't watching live, they can't. <laughs> oh, my God. No. <laughs> That's okay. I have, a, I have a steel wool that'll get that out. The, um... <laughs> There is oh a, no! We're we're watching him cook from my kitchen. All right, hold on. I feel like <laughs> he has two pots on the stove. One for the rice uh, that's that is simmering. Now oh oil, no! Reduce heat, cover, and simmer until ingredients are tender. Fifteen minutes. Okay. Cover. He's got <laughs> that this. Poor pot. He's covering. That's the wrong lid. Oh, <laughs> wrong lid. There you go, bud. He's got this. He's he's exceeding my expectations. Hmm. I think oh my God. curry's a strong flavor. If some of those carrots are burned, we won't even notice. <laughs> you won't even taste some of it. We'll just we'll just crack it. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. We might all die here. Yeah. Well, on, and honestly, if you put a piece of food in there that's got salmonella on it, after you boil it for like fi for like 15 minutes, probably not going to be harmful anymore. No, it'll like. it'll die. Yeah. So reduce. Yeah, that's like when you're when you're baking, it almost doesn't matter what happens to the food before you put it in the oven. Like if you make cookies or something, because. Well, if you bake cookies at 400 degrees, and nothing survives that, so yeah, it's no, a little less concerning. Dead. So, All right. and so Cookie? I'm impressed by your cooking knowledge. I yeah, no, I I I mean it. Like I grew up uh, helping my mom cook because she was like, "You're not gonna grow up not ever having cooked anything." Hey, all right, so. stop rubbing it in, Enzo. <laughs> I, I didn't have think, a choice. I, I didn't have a choice in the matter. <laughs> I don't think I helped my mother cook growing up, but I think I watched enough cooking that I kind of just absorbed the information, so I can make spaghetti, beef stew. Um, you know, a number of other things. It's, it's honestly, if you're a dude and you don't know how to cook, the best thing for you is just to get a crock pot. 
But yeah, for sure. Just oh, throw I've, shit in. I've got one of those put too. Put together and let it happen. And you definitely could have made this curry in a crock pot, by the way, but well, that would have been no fun. See, here's my thing: is I got a crock pot, and then I was like, I'm just gonna cook some chicken in it, and then I fucked it up. How do you mess up in a crock pot? The same way I messed up in a rice cooker. You can literally put a chicken oh, no. breast in the crock pot with nothing else, and it will be fine. Yeah, it didn't turn out well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so where are we right now, Kazo? So right now... Give us a description of the kitchen. Current, Oh, my God. Chaos and destruction. Um, currently, the rice is still on low because I still see some water in there, so I'm letting it kind of cook that out, hopefully. The curry is in there with the water. The, I brought the water to a boil and jumped... Not the curry. The, the like various items are now in there boiling on low for 15 minutes. So at some point, the rice will be done, and I'll just take that off. And the curry will be done in 15 minutes, and then I have to dump this this stuff in there whatever this is the actual curry mix and then that should be that should be it i think so we have more comments from the chat we have tonto duende says this will become learned in health code violation courses yes bcom says crispy crispy chicken curry if a restaurant ran like this they would get that that fat d rating (laughs) uh astrophysics says look at that pan yeah it's pretty black Captain Avatar says, going to have to replace that bad boy. Nope, I got some steel wool. We'll scrub that sucker right off. Damn, it's <laughs> he, like, does this mean that uh, the day that I do go visit and do the podcast live at some point, like, I, is I this would my love fate? That. Is this my fate? What? what you, oh, that you're going to cook? Yeah. So, no, it wouldn't be fun because no. you can actually cook. Not unless you want to. That's true, I guess. You're right. I'll That's have you true. know I am sweating right now, guys. Like, I am in a full sweat. For, from anxiety or the cooking heat? Uh, all of the above. My apartment, <laughs> I, I've turned my apartment down to a temperature that Floridians have never experienced. So it's probably the anxiety. Let's see. Um, Nep- Nepri says, is it, a, is it a black hole at the bottom of the pan? It will add flavor. <laughs> hmm, let's see. I mean, the curry looks good, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, well, you don't even have the curry in there yet. I mean, like the curry minus the actual curry. Nepri says, let's do Kazuo cooking a weekly part of the podcast. That oh. is... Oh, thank you. That would be more. possible if we got a subscriber count that could make it happen. <laughs> That's correct. I should just have a cooking show, guys. That's what this is. Yeah, well, it could be like we could call it we could call it just cooking and destruction with Kazuo. <laughs> sure. what, do, what, do we do like, what do we do like every... Like for every 10 subs we get, we do one of these. Every 10 subs? Yeah, every time not... new subscribers to the extra content, we do one of these. Oh, to the to the extra content. Well, it would take more subscribers to the extra content to pay for all the food. <laughs> that would be <laughs> buying. Mitsugi's and probably counter has. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Mitsugi's counter has bananas on it right now, so everyone in the chat's like banana curry. Yes. <laughs> yes, of course. We should definitely have banana curry. P- part of me feels like that sounds pretty good. Um. I see Rose says, Kazuo, MD chef. <laughs> <laughs> MD chef. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I think when I go up to New York, I'd like to have curry maybe with you. Totally. Well, here's the thing. Um, now, just to, you know, sidebar while he's doing his little moves in the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, when you get here f- Friday, right? If I leave early enough, then we can have curry for lunch. Okay. And then later in the day, we can have ramen at eek before going to broadway guys i have a question yes what does it mean if the rice has become just like one one (laughs) just one what does that mean like it's all (laughs) melded together into one rice that's that's okay though it's sushi rice rice, yeah stir it it's very sticky uh i don't know what that spatula was touching before but okay i hope that spatula is clean that you're using to stir that (laughs) What about banana fish curry? It is, I just yes. It off the side. Yeah, put some bananas in that curry. By the way, that's part of the instructions. Actually, that's why they're there. Mm-hmm. I bought those bananas so you could use them. Yeah, no, that that rice looks good. That's that's what I expected. From here, it looks good. Yeah. So I'm gonna get a a an Airbnb as close to your apartment as I can. And um, I would. I mean, I would love that for like going home together and stuff. But like, think just think about like thing about like i commuting to manhattan to do the things you want to do is gonna is it's is just a, a nuisance and if you could avoid it 
I would avoid it. No, I would I'd just rather hang out with you man. on the train and stuff, honestly. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I'm so down. I I'm like just riding saying, trains. I, it's like, nostalgic I, for me. Let's do it. So I think yeah, the rice perfect. Is done. Yeah, cool. I'm down then. The rice is like, it's more like mashed rice. Set the rice aside. That sucker's done. Yep. I think you're waiting until the till the stuff in the pot becomes tender. Yep, about eight minutes left. And honestly, the stuff that's going to become tender last is probably the carrots. So that would be your that would be your like your, your measuring stick. And when the carrots are tender, then you put the five cubes of curry in there. Stir it well, for five I'm, minutes. It's interesting because he put in so much potato that I wonder if the potato will be the indicator in this case. Mm, mm. There is a lot of potato in there. So. I don't know. We'll find out. I don't. I don't know. What could he mess in? I'm, I feel like if I had to cook one thing at a time, I'd be all right. Like if it was just cook rice, I'd be like, got it. I can do that. Or just cook potatoes. Cool. <laughs> we can do this. Rice is not really a food that you would ever cook by itself because you're almost always eating it with something else. Right. But I'm saying like if I cook the rice and I just put it aside for later and then I go and I cook whatever's next and I put that aside. We don't really have time for that. I know. I'm just saying. So also, we probably only have about 10 more minutes on this segment. Okay, well, so. it's about seven minutes, seven and a half minutes until this curry is done. It's fifteen minutes. Yep, ten minutes, and then oh the news God. break. So, in uh, the in the YouTube live chat, Becom says, "Just don't try and park on Enzo's block unless you want a ticket." Because <laughs> he, <laughs> he he's traumatized for when he parked here and <laughs> got a ticket. I don't have a car oh. to. I won't have a car in New York, so. Yeah, no, that's that's that. great. If Beacon lives, he's in Connecticut. He's in Connecticut, so he it's a it's a short drive for him to come. Oh, hmm. your mom just told me to take the spatula off the stovetop. Oh yes, my mother's watching. So, oh. Where should I? Put? I guess I'll just put it over here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Did that spatula melt? No, 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 no. It wasn't on a heated area. So Bertman says the potato was cut small. It will probably disintegrate. <laughs> <laughs> Rice with bananas is actually really tasty. I believe it because rice is kind of a fl- kind of flavorless. Um, here's want well, here's some wild shit. So yeah, um, in Dominican Republic, it's not uncommon. Ready, ready for this? It's not uncommon to eat um a this one spaghetti dish with like a little like tomato sauce with a half a banana cut into hmm. the spaghetti. I love bananas, so I'm willing to try anything. <laughs> I mean, like, I'll just disclaimer. Maybe that's not all of DR. My dad just likes to eat that shit. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I attribute it to, like, that's something to make people do. But I've, I've eaten it like that before as well with him, and it's not bad at all. Like, just throwing a banana in there with your spaghetti. Like, whatever. We're up to 100 eyeballs in the chat. So that's good. The, 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 the volume just keeps building to a crescendo. So... The world wants to see how this man cooks, you know? That's right. Well, oh, he do, he's got my uh my he's now he's getting plates out. I think oh, he's no, preparing no, no, no. the plate. I'm just doing this so I can grab a carrot and try to cut it. Oh, okay. Just don't destroy my uh my plate that I, had, that I had to eat. Oh, 100. you picked the cutest plate ever. Yeah, that's my plate that I had to eat 100 donuts to get from Japan, so Oh, wow. Yeah, that's awesome. That. The Mr. Donut one. Yep, the Mr. Donut one. You can probably cut the, but you can probably cut any, any anything you bring out of that with a fork. By the way, you don't really need the, you don't need a death knife. Oh no, I put I put the death knife in the sink because it's got salmonella all over. Oh it. no, they're all death knives. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, they're all death knives. That's why I got a new plate and a new fork and a new knife. In fact, you should pull that knife out that looks like a scimitar and hold that thing up. Scimitar. Yeah. The, the big one, the big it's, guy. It's one of the big ones that does that's not serrated. He's pulling them out. That might be it. Oh, that's no, that's serrated. Yeah, a lot of them are serrated, but some, but some of them aren't. It's kind of like skinny, then it gets fat at the end. Like you, like it looks like something that that you'd see out of like Peter Pan or some shit. Yeah, look at that freaking <laughs> thing. Oh my god. Ooh. I think the we are almost in sync with the live chat right now. It's only behind by maybe twenty seconds. It's not that bad. So. About four and a half more minutes left. So, Kazo, do you feel like you will be cooking chicken curry on your own now? Hell no. Is this an experience that you would like <laughs> to replicate at your own home? Absolutely not. Oh, come on. Dude, this is so stressful, and I definitely screwed it all up. Well, you've never cooked It's before. not that stressful, man. You, listen, this is the most stressful ever going to get. You're literally doing it in front of 100 eyeballs. I feel like I've used every utensil in your kitchen <laughs> I, I i heard a piece of advice once from somebody that said that if you're if you're not moving while you're cooking you're doing it wrong <coughs> which in this moment would mean that you should be washing dishes probably but oh. if you want i can wash them later 
I'll I'll wash them. I've only got three minutes left until this is done. Yeah, when you're cooking, I think it's best to be like, when you're not having to tend to the food, cook, wash the dishes you've used so that when you're done, there's like mostly nothing left to do. That's smart. That's a cooking tip for you. Mitsugi's cooking tips. Captain Abbott starting the chat says, mac and cheese and toast is the limit for Kazuo. Yep. (laughs) I don't know. You can burn toast. How do you like your your toast, Kazuo? I'm interested in this. How do I like my toast? Yeah, in the morning. How do you what do you, what do you put on it? How how toasty? In the morning. What kind of bread? This man has the munchies. Indulge him. Normally, yeah, I'm, indulge in, me, in man. Morning, I'm normally, salivating over here. Normally, I'll just have like a breakfast bar in the morning. Minimal mm, effort, what the maximum fuck? results. I just have coffee. <laughs> Jesus, guys. I have it. What? I'll help you out. You guys don't live your anime your anime mornings with toast <laughs> in your <laughs> mouth. Let me shit? help you out, Enzo. How about that? Yes, please. I make a huge protein shake. Now that I have that that insanely awesome blender, I'll put about 12 frozen strawberries in there, five raw awesome. eggs, three scoops of, of vanilla whey protein, some vanilla extract, oh. um, and maybe an avocado. Throw that in there, mix it all up. Tastes exactly like a nice thick strawberry milkshake that you'd get from like an, from like an ice cream rush, ice cream shop. And then, totally. And then I drink that on the way to work. And when I get to work, I will have like uh, maybe crazy crazy uh, home, home fries that has like cheese, all kinds of uh, sausage and bacon and vegetables on top of it. Or I'll get uh, a breakfast sandwich with some tater tots while I'm at work down in the cafeteria. So I'm eating like two breakfasts before 10 a.m. usually. So mm-hmm. that's the shit I'm talking about. And when I get my toast, I don't really like jelly and stuff because I know it's just high fructose corn syrup garbage. <laughs> so I don't really eat that. But I would normally put probably like I'd make a I make like a like a, I like breakfast sandwiches. So I probably make like a breakfast sandwich. How about you? Your, your mom was yelling me? at me to stir, so I stirred. What is your <laughs> What is your breakfast? My go to. So if I if I without if I could have no consequences having this breakfast every day, I would definitely have this every day. It is a peanut butter banana honey smoothie with a sausage and cheese on a very nicely toasted croissant with salt, pepper, ketchup. That's my shit right are there. mad tender. Okay. Well, then I think you're done with them, though. Um, so now I... Hold on. What do I do? Uh, Read the instructions. Turn off the heat. And then crack this open and put it all in there. Is that what it says? Go for it. Oh, my God. This is like the second to last step. Dude. Yep. And then stir it for five minutes, I think is what it said. That sounds like a good breakfast, Enzo. I'm glad you eat something substantial. You, you work pretty hard, so you need to have proper brain fuel. Yeah, because I if, I'm, if they want me to work 15 hours a day, like oh your boy God. gotta eat. I I couldn't do that, man. That's there's no amount of money like they could that they would pay me that would make me work 15 hours. I a day. literally came from work today. I know like, you it's, did. It's been it's been it's been a uh, uh, J- July and August are usually kind of like they're intense for like two three weeks, and then I chill, and then it gets intense from October to December again. Uh, and then again or before tax season. Uh yeah, so it's a basically little bit always busy. Taxis. So it's like all year, all year I'm like working a steady workload, and then like there's I just spike three times a year. It's hmm. what I was, man. I I'm over it. Like I'm just used to it by now. So turn off the heat. I just saw your cup that has the cute little like pig pig design in it. Yes, dude. I'm taking you there. Now that drink looks immaculate. But what kind of like pastries or other things do they have that you can enjoy? So I also ate a tiramisu cake. Oh. Um, but they have so this we're talking about this cafe in New York called Sweet Moment, um, and they have a whole bunch of like pastries and ice cream dishes. And this place is like anime. Like right now, their seasonal serving is a watermelon dessert, and it's like in a bowl with like twenty scoops of watermelon ice cream sorbet on top, and um, Ooh. it's gigantic. And like there's a mango cheesecake, the one that's huge as well. Uh, what I ordered today was just tiramisu cake, which is like a normal tiramisu slice. And I got their cream art red velvet uh, uh, milk coffee tea thing. Super um, good. And, and so would you like to get a giant parfait and split it and be all Yes. Dabu Can dabu? we be cute as hell and do that? Yeah, you want to be Dabu Dabu? That little bear is so cute. It is so cute. Oh, I know. Kawaii. Super <laughs> So, uh, so um, the chat, Bcom wants to know if the whole package of curry was, was called for. No. Well, oh boy. I don't. That's I don't, not the no, response you should have given. Whole thing in. He definitely put the whole thing in there. It yeah. says, "Yeah, man, it looks like the whole thing's supposed to go in there." Uh, what does it say? It says, 
Turn off the heat. Break the golden curry sauce mix into pieces and add them to the skillet. Stir until the sauces are complete or sauce mixes are completely melted for about approximately five minutes. Stirring okay. constantly. Well, we're going to find out. Yeah. So it sounds like Bert Man in the chat might be a chef or some sort. I'm kind of curious what he does because he's... He's 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 uh, he's he's offering very w- good advice and is using term cooking terms mm-hmm. and stuff. So I'm wondering what he does. Um, so, Bertman yeah. officially says that Kaza was doing it right. Okay, bro, it looks good and it smells good. I trust Bertman because he seems to know. He seems to be offering solid advice. It's starting to look good. Yeah. Yeah, it looks really tasty from here. So yeah, so curry really is like a beef stew when you think about it. You just. You're just cooking ingredients and then putting it into a pot with some kind of a sauce and letting it cook, and then you're going to serve it with some kind of a carbohydrate. That's basically what it is. If you were doing katsu or something, then you'd be in hell because then you'd be cutting fillets. Deep fried, man. Yeah, you'd be cutting fillets. You'd be dipping them in an egg and, and breading them and then frying them in the skillet, and then you'd be mm-hmm. a whole other level of hell. So, so that is something I would like to try on the stream because uh, my mom and I used to make chicken cutlets all the time. Well, you are welcome I love, to if you want I love to. Doing that shit. If you come visit and you would like to sh- cook, have cooking with Enzo, we can do that. We have proven we have the capability to do this and doing it fairly well, too. The only thing we need is maybe a second camera that's like right down on the pot so we can look inside the pot. Yeah. But that will have to come later, maybe. I mean, I feel like it's pretty yeah. much done. Okay. I mean, well, it's said to stir for it looks five good. minutes, so there's still like technically two minutes left. Well, we're running a little long now, so why don't we do the new? Why don't we take us out to a news break and then. When we come back, Serve we will be uh, ready to roll, and we'll be doing impressions. And then I guess when, when you're not doing an impression, Cosmo, you can go make a couple plates, and we can try it and let people know how it turned out. Oh, well, I mean, we can make plates on the news break. Um, I think you want to let it cool off a little bit. You're literally boiling that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so who, who would like to read the trivia question, or the, yeah, the intro trivia question? Um, I can do it. Um, so our... Intro trivia question for the break is Will this ca- will this food Kazuo has prepared be edible? <laughs> Find out. <laughs> All right. And when we come back, we have lots of impressions for you. We're going to knock out banana fish. Bam, bam, banana. Give me a ba bam, banana, Kazuo. Ba, 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 banana. Banana, banana fish. We're going to do review Starlight, Agu, Genius Dolls, Island, and Homes of Kyoto. So stay tuned, and we'll be back after that, after the news break. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, Mitsugi's back. Did you miss me? It's time for more of your anime news. Leaving us off today, Code Geass Fukatsu no Lelouch is set to premiere in February 2019. Bandai Visual has released many teasers and previews for the movie that's going to be airing in February. The movie is going to be showed on 120 theaters throughout Japan. The director of the film is Goro Taniguchi and the scriptwriter is Ichiro Okouchi who are key members of the staff, of course, that are returning for the movie. There are also many different people that are going to be designing and drawing the mecha for the film. Nightmare Frame designs by Akira Yasuda and Eiji Nakata, who worked on the Code Geass original designs, and also Turn A Gundam animation director is also involved, as well as designers from Gundam Build Fighters. So this looks like it's going to be pretty interesting. There's going to be a Blu-ray box containing all five parts of the Bokoku no Akido movie series that will be released on Jan- on January 29th, 2019. So if you're a big fan of Lelouch of the Rebellion, which was a very popular television series that came out some years ago, there's a new movie coming out, so you better keep your eyes peeled. Next up, a new sports manga is being made into an anime. The website of Gesson Ma- Magazine announced that a television anime adaptation of Mitsuru Adachi's baseball manga Mix is going to be having a television anime that will premiere in the spring of 2019. The synopsis is tw- taking year taking place 30 years after the events of Touch, which is also a very famous property. The story centers on two brothers, Tachibana Soichiro and is the star second year catcher for Meisei Middle School's baseball and Toma is the third baseman with a golden arm. The pair is joined by sister Otomi, now a middle schooler, first year with an with an 
With an apathetic coach and an unmotivated ace, how will the brothers handle the remainder of their middle school life and what awaits them in high school? So this has been serialized in magazines since 20, since 2012 and has over 7.5 million copies published. So if you're a big fan of sports anime, particularly Touch, you're going to want to look out for this one. Next up, we have more. We have some Gundam news. A continuation of Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans has been teased. The, the Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans television anime Twitter account has teased on Thursday that, that there is going to be a new development in place for fans and then that they should all wait patiently. The television anime's first season, of course, premiered back in 2015, and the second series season came out in 2016. So if you are a big fan of those, of course, they're on Crunchyroll and Hulu, so you can go check them, check them out before this new property comes out. But for now, we're all waiting in the dark and hoping for more Gundam goodness. This is Mitsugi, and this was your anime news break. Now, of course, it's time to get back to the podcast. Ugh, I just can't think of anything. Well, you're in luck. You've got me, the master of not thinking. What do you need? I'm trying to write a commercial for our sponsor, JList.com, but... I can't think of anything funny this time. Uh, this time? When have we ever been funny? And don't we already have a bunch of J-List commercials written? I know, but we need everyone to know that they can go to JList.com and their non-adult mirror site, JBox.com, for all their anime shopping needs. Well, we already say it at the start of every show. I think by now everyone knows to head to JList.com for all their anime shopping needs. But people may have an easier time remembering JList.com if we talk about it in a funny way. You know what, Mitsugi? What? The commercial was inside you all along. What are you talking about? It's like Field of Dreams or something. Look, just hit stop on the recording and everyone will know to shop at JList.com. Can we really do this? Is it funny? No, probably not, but it is meta and that's like cool and stuff, right? I'll take your word for it. Hey, hey, where are you going? To clean up this fourth wall we just broke. JList.com. If you click it, they will fun? No, that's not right. You know me? Of course! Welcome back to episode 433 of the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast. Before the we uh, went to the news break, we had an in-show trivia question. Will this food yeah. that Kazuo prepared be edible? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find out in about 20 minutes, but I will tell you that I went out and looked at it, and it both looks and smells like what I would expect from curry. Nice. Wow. I think the rice the rice looks a little gelatinous, but I think it's it'll be it'll be it'll be edible, especially with curry on top of it. I mean, yeah, it, technically edible, but that's about it. I would say well done. For someone who, who claims to have never cooked before, it was a decent job. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm, uh, I'm, so. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I don't know. Say something. Check, check, one, two. Can't hear you. Check. I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, you're on. All right. Give me a sound Take check a breather. Take a breather, friend. Check, check, one, two. Okay, you're good. All right, All right. so um, who wants to read the... Uh, let me play the. We're gonna move on to our five star review from iTunes, which we seem to never run out of, which is great. <coughs> if I can find the drop, I'll read it when you do the drop. I don't know where the drop is, so just read it without it. <laughs> um, well, this five star review comes from Best Mom Steve. <laughs> five stars, and it says. Easily my favorite anime podcast. I enjoy the more casual yet informative tone and personally enjoy the discussions, arguments between Mitsuki and Kazuo. Sorry, Mitsuki, but I'm pretty sure you're going to be paying for that dinner. <laughs> Your <laughs> recommendations did. are always great in my personal right. experience thus far, and I appreciate the constant mentions of older and arguably better shows that seem to go 
widely ignored in my social circle. Sadly, I haven't subscribed to your website as of yet, but more than likely will have by the time this review gets read. Two-ish hours just isn't enough. I only discovered the podcast a couple months ago, so I don't have much experience with the previous cast members who may still be around. But Enzo and Manny have been great recent additions. Bonus points to the to Mitsugi for choosing the prinnies for, pon- for the prinnies for pawns on the recent episode. Sigia is a fair JP, JP, JRPG of series of mine. Because of this suggestion alone, you are lo- you are locked in for my favorite cast member for life. Thank Mitch, you, my you friend. Got a fan, man. I will flex my biceps. Yeah, for you. thank you. So yeah, flex your biceps for best mom, Steve. They're feeling a little deflated because I haven't lifted in like nine weeks now because of my back. I haven't we're getting in like nine years, but I, we're, we're slowly getting <laughs> back to it because I realize that it's probably not going to really heal. So I'm, I'm just going to have to take anti-inflammatories and correct and use different mm. hormones to live with it pretty much. Yeah. Well, thanks uh, for listening. Best on Steve. I'm glad that you are happy with me and Mandy coming in, coming in real hot out of <laughs> nowhere. Coming in hot. Uh, yeah, thank I hope you. you're, if you're listening right now. Hope your day is going really great. And Love I, you. Thanks for listening. And I would like to make a note that I already paid the bet to Kazuo. It's true. We had a very a much better ramen dinner than the first place we went it to. Was, it was quite good. It was pretty good. It was it was a good night, I will say. I've had bad nights there. But um, I will I will thank uh, Petty Party from the Discord for making us, for <laughs> um, allowing me. For losing his bet. For losing his bet with me, which I used the money from that <laughs> to pay the bet to Kazuo. <laughs> and the bet was, would Legend of the Galactic Heroes finish with, with greater or less than an 8.0 on my anime list, of which it didn't even come close. Because the ending was kind of, mm. eh. so you notice yeah, how so I want to thank so thank you to Petty Party for 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 having the the cojones to put that money up. You notice how Mitz redirects instead of admitting that he was wrong. He's like, yeah, but oh, I was wrong. Somebody else was <laughs> wrong as well. I was. I mean, like technically, our bet was it, I could wait as long as I want to, sure. but like it would. Never I'm not going to wait four years to maybe win a bet. So screw right. it. So I will say, I I just won on all fronts. I didn't have to pay okay. nothing wow. good for so you. nobody. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you took a you took a fat L today though. So Oh my <laughs> god, even. dude. I feel like I've lost some pounds <laughs> just from all the just sweat and anxiety. All right. Here's here comes your impression drop. Today we're gonna be doing impressions. Impression time, believe it. We got impressions believe to do people, it. so we need to get to it. We're gonna start off with banana fish. Yeah, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, so let's ba- do this. Banana fish was actually my first pick, so this is my number one that I wanted and I got it, which is super cool. Um, it's currently just sitting at a 7.88 with, I think, about six, five episodes out at the moment. Um, I'll read the synopsis of Mal just for just for context, I guess. So, nature made Ash Links beautiful. M- nurture made him a cold, ruthless killer. A runaway brought up as the adopted heir and sex toy of Papa Dino Golzine. Ash, now the rebellious age, now at the rebellious age of 17, forsakes the kingdom held out by the devil who raised him. But the hideous secret that drove Ash's older brother mad in Vietnam has suddenly fallen into Papa's insatiable, insatiably ambitious hands. And it's exactly the wrong time for Eiji Okamura, a pure-hearted young photographer from Japan, to make Ash Lynx's, Ash Lynx's acquaintance. So what drew me to this show um, initially was just like purely their advertising aesthetic. Um, I think it's cool when people use fonts very boldly. Um, this is like purely from like like this show drew me in purely from design at first um like for example like kill bill to me not the best movie ever but i love their use of like like their bold use of like in your face shit um sometimes it can go that can be too much but in this show it's kind of working and it kind of has similar colors too like the yellow black and white so i was like okay cool so they're going for this kind of like uppity like like kind of like swaggy kind of vibe which draws me in i watched the trailer totally took me in too because i like the character designs um, so I sat down and watched it, and what get what kept me watching. Um, I don't want to talk about like super like story arcs, really. Not it's just any because like I feel like it's something you you guys should go watch. But um, the impression that I've had so far is that the animation is pretty smooth. Um, it moves very fluently, fluidly, and the reason that it's standing out even more to me this time is because the story in my opinion is also moving pretty well like this pacing of the show i like it i like it's kind of moving at a pace like i like it a lot (laughs) so it it keeps things keep happening is it moving at a or is it no or is it no or is it a 
Bang. <laughs> I can't. I can't produce. I know you don't have the drop because our soundboard is currently on the, on broken. But or is, is it a ah senpai? Bang. Senpai. Oh, I just walked into that. Oh, anyway. Um. But yeah. So the the pacing of the show is like. It, it it keeps me like excited and curious because even when they're even when they're discussing dialogue within the mafia you know background it's a very like mafia centric show with a lot of like under underworld stuff not underworld like it's like underground stuff um it has the story has hints of noir so i expect dialogue um and when the dialogue's being delivered between cast members it's it's lengthy but the pacing is good and the music in the background keeps you interested um, so I was lo- I've been locked in. I have loved every character so far. Some of them are a little weird. Um, I like that this anime is pretty, pretty like no holds bar when it comes to just like showing shit pretty, to your face. It's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty. It's pretty. It's like pretty like in your face about a lot of <laughs> shit, which I respect. Um, because it's done like in context of the show, I think it's done pretty pretty well. Um. The manga for this anime uh, is very well liked. A couple people I know have finished reading it recently with the, with this mm-hmm. coming to, with this anime coming to light, and they have told me that it blows their mind. That it's really good. Um, so based on the first three episodes, again, I think you guys should go watch the first three episodes. I don't want to talk about like story arcs, but what do you guys feel about it before I say pass or fail? Have you guys tried it? I watched oh, one episode. Yeah, I have. I watched one episode, but I can't remember much about it. I have not. Um, I've enjoyed all four episodes that I've seen so far. Um, totally. It's, uh, the manga came out in the 80s, so it definitely has that kind of 80s vibe to it. Mm-hmm. And um, it was originally published in a shoujo manga, which I, or magazine, which I thought was very interesting. It was, so um, weird, yeah. yeah, it was marketed towards women. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, so far I have enjoyed it. It's, it's very, uh, it doesn't hold anything back. <laughs> nope, it, it really doesn't. Um, and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes like I, and I think you guys would agree, sometimes not holding back can be done to this tastefully, but I think, um, the way the show, like it sets up its world. First of all, I think it's, I think it's in New York or LA. Yeah. Um, it's, I think it's in LA. So in context with the tone of the show, with the setting of the show, it's it kind of it kind of works um so all that being said i'm pretty locked into banana fish um i like when random things are just like said like like they use the phrase banana fish in the show a couple times and like just me going like what the fuck is banana fish would like you say you're... i love that i love that kind of stuff would so. you say you're bananas here it comes oh boy or, <sighs> or or perhaps that it has you hook line and sinker that's a that's a fishing joke I got it. <sighs> yeah. Oh, damn, you're really back on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Make sure you don't trip on that banana. Anyway, I'm definitely passing banana fish no. with flying colors. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to see more. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been this excited. You're excited? Feel these nipples. I will say Mitsugi pulled the ultimate bro move and brought me a beer. I did. He deserves it. Fantastic. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's good shit. Open that, open that brew up. <sighs> Yeah, I'm very by it, but we'll see how it develops. That's yeah, our fourth we'll pass of the sure. season. We got four more. Can we? Can, do I hear a fifth? Do we actually have four other shows that are good? <laughs> We're gonna find we'll out. Find do out. I hear? <laughs> do I hear a fifth with review Starlight? I don't know. Uh, so yeah, you want me to go ahead and do review Starlight? I want you to do it. Um, review Starlight. I review review. review. Please review rev- review. Start. Uh, when I originally did my picks, I no picked reaction. Tsukumogami. When I originally did my picks, I picked Tsukumogami uh, Kashimasu, and uh, that one took a long time to release, and it's not anywhere showing anywhere legally. Um, I had to find it online, and uh, it's it's not bad. I it's a very very chill, relaxing show, but I don't think it's something that I would have passed, and I wasn't really wanting to wait until next week to uh give my impressions on it so but what i did find was review starlight because it was tweeted out and i was like what is this and i checked it out and i i fell in love with it instantly <laughs> so i was like i'm gonna switch these out because Tsukuogami kashimasu is good i mean it's okay but it's not anything that i probably would have passed but review starlight review starlight is by kinema it's doing by it's being done by Kinema Citrus Studios, who made Made in Abyss. 
And it's directed Ooh. by Tomohiro Furukawa, who worked under Ikuhara on Penguin Drum. And that shows 100%. And I'll get to that later. But um, Review Starlight follows our protagonist, Karen Aijo, who is part of the Seisho Music Academy. And it's an academy where girls can go who have an interest in the arts, like music, performing, Ooh, acting, dancing. Uh, in the first episode, we learned that Karen really has a love for the performance known as Starlight. And the school was apparently put on Starlight previously, but it was a, 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 an amateur performance, that, and they wanted to improve upon it. Um, the first episode, we're introduced to a full cast of girls who attend the school as they're practicing together. Then the new girl shows up, Hikari. And we have flashbacks to tell us that Hikari and Karen were childhood friends, and they made a promise to each other that one day they're going to stand on the stage together. And they made a pact over the hairpins that they put in their hair. And um, Hikari had moved away to England as a child, but now she's back, but she seems to have changed. She's more withdrawn, overly kind of cold to her once best friend. And up to this point in the show, in the first se- in the first episode, I was like, this is a very typical cool slice of life. I was like, all right, it's, it's nothing special. That is until Karen discovers the magical Ikuhara elevator. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, dude. Ikuhara, Karen. that guy. <laughs> Karen decides late one night that she wants to speak to Hikari alone and stumbles upon an elevator that wasn't there previously. And confused by the elevator's sudden appearance, she presses the button and is suddenly plummeted down into a secret basement. And this is where the show starts to become very strange. And we are introduced to like the transformation sequence where a massive sewing machine puts uh, together costumes that are then placed on the girls and a large stage unfolds for them. And Karen, meet, it, Karen meets a talking giraffe and <laughs> witnesses her friend Hikari fighting against another of the school's students on the stage together. Uh, the draft teller tells her that this is a fight to win the leading role in the review. And these performances are so much fun to watch because the girls are literally fighting one another with like chosen weapons while singing. And it's very dramatic. The scenery constantly changes around them. Platforms rising, falling, props fall out of the sky. It's, wow. It's, uh, it reminds me so much of Utena. <laughs> it's so much of Utena. It's um, the one girl in the first episode is fighting with a bow that she has a crystal on the top of. So all the lights go out and she lights up this crystal while she's singing. And it, she's just bathing like this green light. It's really, it's a lot of fun to watch. Um, it's very reminiscent of the um, dueling game in Untida in a way, because to win these duels, the one girl must remove the pin that holds their cloaks on from the other opponents. If they can remove that pin, they win. So if you have seen Utsuna, it's it's so much like it. <laughs> yeah, Karen uh, um, hates watching her friends fight, so she decides to jump down and put an end to their fighting. She actually ends up winning against both of them. And so now she's currently in the lead in the first episode, at the, by the end of the first episode. And of course, the other girls are not pleased with this. Um, each episode so far starts off with, except for the fourth one, which I watched today. Um, but up to the third episode, each one started off with a school slice of life. And so they receive a text message from a mysterious person who says, this girl and this girl must duel tonight. And I found myself in each episode anticipating the performances at the end of the episodes because they're so much fun to watch but i was kind of like i was kind of disappointed the fourth episode didn't have a performance but they're they're developing characters and having them move closer to for sure yeah for each um, to mean something they gotta build that shit you know yeah i have no idea if the show will continue to be intriguing i think it's entirely possible the series could never go anywhere with the mystery and wind up just being a mediocre in the end. But so far, I'm enjoying the hell out of it, and I want to watch more. And, That's awesome, um, man. The animation and camera work is fantastic. It, it's it's so it's so much fun to watch, the performances at the end. What are the color palette like? Is it... Pa- like, is it um... Oh, it's bright. Let me show bright? you. I actually... Uh, saved a couple gifts I could show to you, but um, yeah, I mean, it's not overly bright. There, there are a lot of colors though, but like um, pastel-y? lots of reds and blues. Uh, um, a couple other notes that I wanted to throw out is that it was basically um, apparently based on the Takarazuka Review, which is an all-female yep. theater troupe in Takarazuka. Yep. Several of its ex-members are actually involved in it, involved oh, in the creation of Starlight Review, which is also a musical play. And it's only just now being uh, adapted into an anime. Guys, I'm so confused right now. 
Mitt, <laughs> okay. Mitz is eating the curry and it like, but he's actually eating it when he doesn't have to. <laughs> Why are you eating that? Because it's Maybe good. I'm it. hungry. Okay. But so yeah, my end of my impression is that I'm passing because I love it and I want to see more. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what do you want me to do with this? Oh, I'm glad you're passing. Mm, that looks like fun. Wait. I've enjoyed it oh, a lot. Oh, and boom goes the dynamite. I'm gonna I'm gonna review this curry now. Oh God. The rice is a little gelatinous, a little overcooked. Yep. Um, but it's not bad, to be honest. And the curry tastes exactly how I thought. And I don't feel like I'm going to be poisoned because it was cooked a lot. And I've almost eaten the whole plate. Jeez. So apparently I'm hungry. <laughs> I'll give this curry a shocking and unexpected four curry cubes out of five. Wow. wow. A whole pack almost. So, I mean. I put up some gifts in our chat. Oh, um, that looks so fun. What the yeah. fuck? <laughs> Mitch definitely likes it more than I do. It needs more onions and potatoes, but it's good. Oh, I can totally see the Utna. Mm-hmm. Like, I 100% see the influence. Even, like, in the outfits, like, the way the uniform looks, like, the shoulder and the, her cuffs yeah. are super Utna. I'm I'm hoping that it goes as weird as Utna did. <laughs> because I, I loved watching Utna. I was like... I love the mystery surrounding like the entire dueling, so I'm hoping this does something similar and keeps my interest as long. For sure. I'm glad you liked it. Yep. Thank you. I just burped. Oh god, he's gonna die. <laughs> Sounds Excuse good. You. I'm not eating it. <laughs> Alright, so that's now we have five passes. Do I hear a six? I'm gonna be reviewing or doing an impression on Agu Genius Dolls, which is an anime that I don't think anybody else on the entire planet except me has watched. Watch this. Have you watched it? No, you I don't, don't even say. Know it is. Mandy, have you watched it? No, but I did look at it. Have you watched it, Enzo? No, I do not have the. I don't have the mental capacity to fit this one in. In my it's small, because it's a genius <laughs> show, really. <laughs> truly, truly. So it's you know you just you, it's it's above your head. And if I drop dead during this impression, it's because of the curry. So um, I will uh, just <clears throat> shut off the cameras and leave and never come back. <laughs> yeah, they'll find me. Someone will report a bad smell. That <laughs> Otaku cop can attest to that and. They'll find my body all being, you know, and my cat will starve to death and it'll be it'll be awful. So Agu Genius Dolls is a studio <laughs> Dean. So dark. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Studio Dean show, so I would start off by saying, as you might expect from Studio Dean, it doesn't look great. I don't know why Studio Dean is un, is incapable of making decent looking shows, even like average looking, but they just can't do it. So whatever. What are some other popular Studio Dean shows? Well, they did Gura Zeni, which I love. Yeah. But not because, but I don't love it because of how it's animated. I love it because of what it is. Yeah. And they did Pupa. I don't know. Look up Studio Dean. They've done a shitload they of stuff. They did Pupa, They huh? do like three shows a season. I don't know. There's a ton of stuff. I have tops all the way over there. Hold on. I'll look at So, that. Agu Genius Dolls is about a girl who is, who is taking ballet with her best friend, who also is taking ballet, and the, her friend is very talented. She's considered a genius. And the, the girl... Can't really keep up with her. She 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 tries really hard and she's really focused and she she does her best, but she just can't close the gap between the two of them. Okay, so Studio Dean has done a, a ton of stuff, a like of stuff. hundreds of shows. And you know, in the eighties, not bad. All right, they did Ronma one half. They did Pat Labor, the OVA, and they you know they came out in the eighties. Mm -hmm. uh, Urusei Yatsura, very super popular, super popular. Um, in the nineties, eh, oh Kenshin. They, they did, did the... Roroni Kenshin. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Neither did I. Uh, 2000s is, I think, when it kind of like fell apart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I see Roro says that they, they also did uh, Higurashi. Oh, God. They did Gravitation, which is, if I remember correctly, just a show about boobs, basically. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Fruits Basket. Um, read mm. or Die. The OVA or the, the OVA. CD. The okay, OVA. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, Samurai Deeper Kyo. Terrible. <laughs> interesting time. manga yeah. though that's one of the few mangas i've read in my life yeah a bunch of stuff all right so the girl that's not that's not as good as her friend is in is like in this section of tokyo at night and there's all this stuff happening and she goes up to this guy who's selling books and she's curious about <clears throat> what's in the books and what's in the books what's in the book the, the guy's blind and, and someone knocks some of his books over and she picks them up and helps him hmm. and as a thank you he gives her a book 
that he wrote the books himself, and he's trying to promote them. So he, she goes home, she takes the book, and it's about these things called Agu, which I'm going to do my best to explain it in as quickly as possible because this is our long episode already. The Agu, in my understanding, is basically like throughout ge- throughout history, you've had geniuses. They mentioned Chopin, Mozart, Mendelssohn, Cosmo. um, art, various artists like um, you know, Michelangelo, Kazuo, like Enzo, Enzo, Mandy, <laughs> definitely not Mitsugi, and even Cornelius. He's in there, and these people, it's it's as if their es- their their genius essence is harvested. Like there are these people that are called like tailors, and they. They will find these people and they will do experiments on them and they will capture their genius essence that can be applied to other people in the future. So this girl, her friend, has not one or two, but she has three genius ballet people attached to her. She has three Agus that are sort of like these supernatural entities that are helping her be... She's sort of channeling the essence of these famous ballet people throughout history. So there's, of course, no way that her friend could ever close the gap. It'd be like me as a pianist trying to perform as well as Mozart, Mozart. Chopin, and Franz Liszt combined. Yeah. It's impossible. No one, Nobody on earth will ever achieve that. And so, but the inhumane manner in which these agu are created uh, sparks this, like, effort to try to remove the agu from her friend because it's just horrible, right? And so what happens in, in, um, is that her friend... She goes, well, I can't be your friend anymore because this is just terrible and I'm never going to close the gap. So, like, all of my ambition is crushed. I can't possibly catch up to you, so I'm just going to quit ballet and I can't be your friend anymore because you're a bad person. And her friend says, wait, mate. <laughs> mate kure. Mate kure. And so she stops. She comes back and she goes, come with me. And so her friend goes, well, they follow her to, like, this fish market hmm. at night. It's very sketchy. I don't know why she's following her friend. And in the basement of one of these fish markets, it is revealed that she is going to have an agu removed from her and given to her friend. Wow. Which means that her friend is basically condoning, I mean, one of the most horrific acts you could possibly imagine on a person. Like, the, the way that they describe the experiments that are, that are performed to get to this agu are beyond anything you've heard of. Like, forget any kind of torture you've heard of. It's worse. Okay? Jeez. It's bad. Okay? So to have one on you means that you're sort of accepting that and... and, and um giving approval of it. And so what happens in the end is that her friend <clears throat> sabotages the experiment and the bookseller and the bookseller's sort of assistant come in and they are and they essentially destroy the facility that is being used there to to create these agu. But now that facility is only the 10th largest in the world. So what happens is a couple other people from other facilities come in, they investigate, they're trying to figure out who did this because they are they, they think of it as a threat. And so it's a very bizarre anime. It really is. The, 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 the guy who, the tailor that's in charge of the 10th biggest facility is like almost like an alien monster. He kind of molts his skin to escape some of their traps. And he's, on, he's just a bizarre, grotesque-looking creature. And the, the Agu themselves are pretty much grotesque little creatures. The animation isn't that great. The art looks subpar, I would say, because that, I mean, as unfortunately, it's Studio Dean. And what are the colors? I mean, it doesn't. I wouldn't say it looks terrible. Like, I'm not offended by it. The colors, mm. like the color palette, yeah, 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 brighter than you'd think for a description like that, that I just gave. Yeah, um, I was thinking like darker, like darker greens, but no, it's not. not. Um, it's I wouldn't I wouldn't call the color palette um exceptionally notable. It isn't like it's stylized <coughs> in some certain way to make gotcha. it look to make it look a certain way. The show isn't really terrible. I, after the first episode, I thought, wow, this could pass. Like, it's interesting. Because in the first episode, we were at the point where she learns what the agu are. She's put on these glasses that came with the book, and she can see the strings that are coming out of her friend's body. And the agu are standing far above her friend, like controlling her like a, like puppeteers. Jeez. But they're allowing her to be the most incredible ballerina anybody's seen. And and that, and that was where the first episode ended. And I was like, this is kind of interesting. That does, like, yeah, because like the way you're talking about it, kind of does interest me. I'm like, I'm okay with the whole like story plot being, like genius traits being transferred over to people. That sounds cool. But in the the second and third episodes, I would call them weird and bizarre, and not that appealing, and a little boring. I actually fell asleep in the third episode. I knew I had this feeling I would. Oh no! And surprise, surprise. And I mean, but I've been good lately. That's true. I made it through two. I made it through the first two and a half episodes, but then I just couldn't hang in there. The third episode was not catching me. Um, I, I don't think this is a terrible anime, 
I think no one's watching it. I think that it's kind of weird. It's definitely weird. I, I, I'm not going to pass it. I think we got better things. Uh, but it's not like, it's not a Senjushi level bad. It's animated better than Backstreet Girls, but it's just not exceptional. It doesn't really catch me. I'd call it average. It's not, it's not all that interesting. So I'm going to give it, obviously it's going to fail, but um, yeah, but I wouldn't call it a pile of shit. Cool. And that's the, and that's the way uh, that's the way it goes. So that's the way that goes, huh? That's right. Yeah. So my next one is Island, which was not originally one of my top five. It just kind of came into my lap. Because, I'm excited to hear about this. Because <laughs> uh, like the way the picks fell out, Island, and just like, I, and I say that because I want people to know that like, this is not something like I would outright want to talk about. <laughs> okay. An anime like this, um, it's just not my thing. Like, uh. Well, hold on. I guess I'll yeah, what is to it? talk about what the story, like the anime is about. Um, Urashima and is an island that's far from the mainland. The people who live there lead carefree lives. Uh, but five years ago, the island's three great families suffered a great series of misfortune and succumbed to suspicion. The people of the island cut off all contact with the mainland and began a slow decline. The key to saving the island lies in three girls who belong to the three families, but they are bound by old traditions and are conflicted. On that island, a lone man washes ashore. This man claims to be from the future, and he begins a solitary struggle to change the island's fate. Um, that was a, that was a synopsis off my anime list. Um, it's off the bat the synopsis is, isn't something that would grab me because I'm very iffy on time travel because it can either be dumb or really cool uh and based on the character art me being superficial i was like i don't really think they're gonna do it well but nonetheless i went and tried it (sighs) okay so (laughs) like (laughs) i just i mm, i really think i i think i'm i really think i'm at a point now where like i just can't watch an anime that is like like grown teenage looking boy with like lowly sized girls with um, <laughs> and have it be pervy and like etchy mm. i can't do it i really can't do it anymore i watched two and a half episodes of this and the whole time i was just like god i'm so annoyed <laughs> and also like they just it's just like oh the island and the island and this island and the future and the island <laughs> and the future and the island and the future like that's the whole that's <laughs> that's all I got from this. Um, I don't. I am someone that really watches this shit when it's my turn to talk about it. But this is like the first time where I completely zoned out. I sh- I shut off watching this. I like I was watching. I looked down. All of a sudden, I looked up and the it was episode was over because i was i just was so not in it uh the character designs are well the colors are standard animation is pretty standard um the island's beautiful i will say um the story i mean it's there but it's like intermittent with all these like all these like just moments of etchiness and like these girls look like they're six years old but they're bro, all like they're they're 18, 18 or bro. 17 or whatever and it's just so i just can't do that anymore i just can't do that it's anymore really perverse, and honest. one of the comments on my anime list uh i think says this best <laughs> um i'm gonna read it for you guys it is from a user uh light kita 13 and he or she says the island, this island is about an island. The main character, Island, travels back in time to an island. He meets an island girl on the island named Island who sings about the island. Yes. On the island, he sexually islands another island girl named Island. That's fantastic. This island is about an island. The scenery features an island an island depiction of an island. The voice actors sound like islands and have islanders living on the island. This island is about an islander who needs islanders who go through I Icelandic promise I'm gonna choke. problem on an island in the middle of an island. Everything about this island is so island. This <laughs> island is about an island. Sounds like a Steam wow. review. I am failing the <laughs> shit out of the show. Um, I have not watched this or played the game, 
but it sounds like somebody in the chat has played the game. They said they finished an entire visual novel arc in three episodes, so that doesn't surprise but me. Out of I... out of five, how many islands are you gonna give it? Um, I'm gonna give it out of island. Uh, out of island, how many out of, islands? Um, out of five islands, I'll give it an island within the island in which making it not really an island at all. Now, is that in the Some... future? <laughs> <laughs> right. Please fail this shit. Here comes your fail drop. Good fuck. Thank you. Elizabeth happily ever after. Of course, Elizabeth. What a pile of shit. <laughs> I just can't do it anymore, That's guys. Like, like seventeen-year-old girls looking like they're fucking four, and then also like etchy moments with this dude that looks like an actual perverse. I, just, I fucking do it. It's dude, perverse yeah. because they want you to fantasize about banging five-year-olds, but then they justify it by going, "Oh, well, but they're seventeen. <sighs> yeah, but the but the plot is heavy. Like they're mature. Like fuck that. She's six, dude. but I'm she's so, got double so D-sized titties. I'm so past that. Yeah. No, no six-year-old can have double D-sized titties. That's proof she's seventeen, but she looks. Uh, six. But 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 she's three foot three. Oh I wonder if uh, the visual novel had porn scenes. I hope, God, I hope not. On the island, on you the just, beach. You just hear island. Mandy googling right now. She's like, "Porn scenes island hentai." I am. <laughs> I'm checking to see if it was a porn game. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that mechanical keyboard. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the. Uh, I don't I've never have heard a person Google keyboard. porn quicker. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. All right, we have one it more really question. Like it, was. it really was just like island, island, the future island. It's on Vita and PS4. Oh boy. You still have the munchies, uh, Cosmo? Or Enzo? Whatever your name is? Of course, I'm munching Sorry. on something right now. What are you munching <laughs> whatever, on? Whatever, wait, what the fuck? You say whatever, my. <laughs> what, is, <laughs> what, is your cho what is your munch of choice? Uh, in this current state that I'm in, uh, I usually just like eating uh, Pringles. <laughs> Would you like some curry? I have eaten a, I've eaten my plate of curry and half of Cosmo's plate of curry. Yeah, I'm not eating that. <laughs> I, know, I know who cooked it. I'm not eating that. Dude, you cook the also, chicken. I'm just not hungry. You cook the chicken for like 35 minutes. There's no way it can hurt you. Yeah, I'm also just not hungry. Yeah. Okay, well, all right. Well, we have uh, Holmes of Kyoto left, so let's uh, let's let's see yep. how Holmes does. Holmes is it a bunch of like, uh, Mexican uh, gangsters. What's up, Holmes? Yo, what's up, Holmes? No more locked doors. <laughs> Gracias. This is no Holmes of Kyoto or no Kyoto Teramachi Sanjo no Holmes, and it's done by Studio Seven. Or seven. I'm sorry, not seven. Oh wait, is it seven? I don't know. You say Japanese seven? Studio, studio Island. <laughs> I said seven because I was thinking Japanese with seven. Anyways, I'm uh... <laughs> oh, sorry. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, it. So I was intrigued by the premise of uh, Homes of Kyoto because I love mysteries and I love mystery stories. So a show about an antique shop owner who solves small town mysteries seemed right up my alley. Um, in the first episode, we're introduced to Mashiro Aoi, who is a high school girl who just found herself inside of an antique shop in Teramachi, wanting to sell some wall scrolls. And uh, she meets Kiyotaka, who at the time when she comes in is currently running the shop and witnesses him explaining to someone how he knows the piece that they brought in is a counterfeit. And he, once he gets to Aoi after dealing with that customer, he can quickly assess that her wall scrolls are priceless antiques and originals. So he starts to deduce why she's in the shop and how she came upon these scrolls. And it turns out she stole them from her grandfather and hoped to sell them so she can get money for a train ticket. And she has to take a train to Saitama, where an ex-boyfriend is now living with an ex-friend of hers. Awesome. They ran away together, and now she wants to give him a piece of her mind and get things off her chest. Um, using her story, Kiyotaka begins to explain the meaning of the wall scrolls and how and she and that she brought to him. And tries to kind of put her petty revenge plot into perspective a bit. Um, he refuses to buy the wall scrolls, but he does offer her a part-time job. And it seems like the two sort of hit it off, and they start to solve tiny mysteries that people bring to Kiyotaka, because he's known around Kyoto as a very quick-witted and often very snarky man who's very intelligent and able to solve issues that other people may not have been able to. Um, I... Obviously, was not expecting writing on the level of Arthur, Arthur Conan Doyle. Of course not. And I was definitely <laughs> not expecting this, uh, small, these small town mysteries to be life-threatening situations at all. Just a but small I town was mystery. hoping that the mysteries would feel a bit more mature because I saw it had the seinen tag on it. Um, 
And when I originally looked at the show and read the synopsis, I was expecting Aoi to be an adult and not a high school girl. Mm, I was kind of disappointed with that. Like, I did not like her reason for being there and ending up. I just, I just found it very childish in a way. But um, in the second episode, it involves a young woman named Saori, who is a stand-in for this role as an ancient princess in a festival. It's being held near the Kamo shrines. And uh, she's been chosen, she's also been chosen to attend a very expensive college, which is very, also very prestigious. And Saori has been receiving threatening letters. So her mother calls Kiyotaka and asks him to find out who is sending her these letters. And I'm, I'm not going to spoil the mystery because it's the entire story. But um, And then the third episode involves a trio of brothers who inherited some paintings from their father. But the paintings are missing now and they want Kiyotaka to discover what happened to them. And these mysteries are not mind-blowing, but it is fun to watch Kiyotaka and Aoi solve together because they have a really nice chemistry. Um, I definitely don't think the show is bad. It's just it's very relaxing Ishike vibe to it. The animation is mm. not fantastic. But it's adequate for what they're trying to achieve, and the art is pleasing to look at. It's a very soft aesthetic that leads to the very chill atmosphere. Um, it's a very relaxing show, but I couldn't blame somebody if they found it boring. Um, I do think wish the mysteries and characters are a bit more mature, but um, I'm still interested. The third episode really kicked it up a notch, in my opinion. I thought the end of the mystery was something that I was not expecting. So I did like that episode. Um, I think for myself, I'm going to continue to watch it, but I can't guarantee I'll eventually drop it. <laughs> it's uh, something that I could definitely turn on. <clears throat> I can see myself turning on after work to wind down. And um, I mean, I am going to fail it for a review. Because, but if you do like ESHK shows, I think you could try out a couple episodes to see if it's something you might be interested in. Or if you have an interest in like Japanese pottery or painting lessons, because it does teach you a lot about famous artists and um at least from the first three episodes that i've seen about famous artists and um yeah stuff that they have created so uh yeah gonna fail it but it is interesting <laughs> man you are one pathetic loser you know manny i'm not, I'm not really surprised that you picked that one because i know you just can't resist because it's holmes and you have that, mm -hmm. you have it in your blood but yep that's right but i'm also not surprised you didn't pass it because i know your standards for that are pretty high so i think that they would have had to have done a like a damn good job for it to be yeah. satisfying for you but you know i respect that agreed all right so um we have now passed five shows we passed the obvious cells at work which seems like the one i've heard the easy number one of the season it's mm -hmm. looking pretty easy to be number one yeah, yeah i think so too anglo moist which is pretty great um we passed banana fish today and we passed review banana starlight fish. today and we passed honey bottle yeah the impressions that we have not done are Attack on Titan Season 3, Fully Cooly Progressive, Grand Blue, Tenro, Sirius, The Jaeger, and Free, Dive to the Future. And those will be next week. I'm interested in Tenro. Me too. Me too, but so, it's on fucking Netflix, man. Yeah. And there are three Make it happen. left. You know what else yeah. is on Netflix, but it is horrific? What? What? Baki. The Grappler. Ba it really? Un Baki. Fucking watchable. Don't even bother with it. That makes me sad. Don't even bother trying. It's It's horrendous. Anyway. Shall we move on to the mailbags? Let's do it. Oh my god, we're so long. <laughs> this mm. is well, what let's, she said. we'll try to be quick, yeah. All right. It's time for an almighty anime mailbag. Anime. 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 M -m -m mailbag bag. Oh, uh, yeah. If you want to submit oh, a yeah. if you want to submit a mailbag, our website www.aaapodcast.com has a button on the top that says mailbags and you can write us a mailbag and we will answer it for you. Mailbags, mailbags, mailbags. Mail mailbags, 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 island, 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 island. island. <laughs> All right, AC Rose writes, Netflix has certainly become a hot topic in anime these days and more recently we've been seeing their original content appear on their services in addition to their licensed content. <laughs> The problem is their content appears to get added in its entirety outside of the traditional seasonal format. Everything else is released, at, and as and and as a result, wait, what? What? In addition to their licensed content, the problem is their content appears to get added in its entirety outside of the traditional seasonal format. Everything else is released at, and as a result, would I would never fall in line with the podcast seasonal picks unless they had good timing, like Devilman Crybaby. Would the podcast ever consider finding a way to discuss Netflix's original uh, properties 
that are released outside of the season schedule, or would they sadly be considered OVAs and won't get covered? I think we've been covering them. Yeah, yeah we covered. I think almost, I think we just we just postponed the review until after it's released on Netflix. We we you know? covered almost everything Netflix has done. We did Sidonia, we did Ajin, we did Devilman Crybaby, we did Children of the Whales, we did Violet Evergarden. Yeah. Erased. Erased. Generally, with um, those, yeah, we'll do the impression as it airs in Japan, and then we just won't review it until it's fully available in the states. That makes sense. I wasn't on the show yet, but I don't think anyone picked up B the beginning. That's so maybe that's yeah, correct. We missed. We don't have that one or the other one that's kind of similarly or named Adam, that came out around the same time. We did. We did Adam. We did. Adam, we, did oh. him, we failed it. I think. Oh okay. Uh, I think that was one of mine. Hmm. I didn't okay. really care for it. I thought it was kind of boring. Who would like to read the next mailbag? I'll read uh, it. Uh, yeah. No, oh, go okay. ahead, friend. It's a short one. It comes from Rika yeah. Wolf. It says here. I don't know if you guys have covered this, but what happened with Chiaki and Kimiko? I understand dun, Chiaki dun, dun. has a lot with her books, but why did Kimiko leave? They both died, and they will be missed. <laughs> no, oh, don't no, say no, that. No. That's awful. Stop it. Stop it's it. so hard to say goodbye oh, no. to oh, yesterday. Oh, <laughs> that shook me to the core. Wow. <laughs> That's not true. All no. right, Chiaki's oh. writing her books. And Kimiko, actually, I've been t- I've been talking with Kimiko lately, and she may drop in for an episode or two here and there. There's actually no particular reason why Kimiko's not here. Well, on she's the show. also been writing. Well, books no, well. she's she's, she's also an books. author now. She's just focusing on it. That's true. I mean, I, what I what I should say is there was no explicitly stated reason. I think she's just busy and, and was feeling a, shift a little in focus. Yeah, she That's was a little it. busy and feeling a little tired of podcasting for a little bit. while maybe, but but it seems like she might be inter- into coming in for an episode here or there. But so. Despite your assumption. Have, which means we're going to have to get rid of somebody. Mandy and Enzo, it's, you have to fight to the death. It's me. It's you. <laughs> I'll take one for the team. <laughs> what a plot it's, twist. It's Neil. <laughs> what a twist. It's Neil. What a twist. <laughs> so what I will say is that despite the uh, prior thoughts that both Kazuo and Kimiko have been de- were deceased, perhaps neither of them are really deceased after or all. Or that we're the same person. Oh, my God. Oh, jeez. Think about it. Maybe Enzo's Kimiko. He came in right about the time that she disappeared. I would not be upset if I was Kimiko. Wow. All right, next mailbag. <laughs> I'll read it. Hey there, Animu this Addicts. So damn uh, long. This one comes from Alpha Omega. I'm never reading a mailbag this long again, just so you know. Write shorter mailbags. I love you. <laughs> uh, once again, from Alpha Omega. Hey there, Animu Addicts. As someone who was a repeater, a repeat listener back around ep- episode 20 to 50 ish, I'd like to congratulate you guys on continuing to create a staple anime podcast. The new podcast still has the same familiar feel, so thank you. Um, now, the reason for the long gap in listening to the podcast ties in with the question I have for you. Around the time of those podcasts, I was well invested in, con- in a continued consumer of anime, namely Mecha Base, Code Geass, Gundam, etc. But with my growing interest, I decided to become more a more social consumer, and that's when I got turned off anime. The community I found was uh, the community that I the community that I found was ultra childish and ex- and extremely, as Enzo would put it cringe although as a, as i've grown i found the community i found the community has as well and i've wait what you're good, you're good. although you're good. oh i see although as i've grown i found the community has as well and i'm finally coming back to one of the to one of my favorite mediums my question is did any of the hosts either in the past or currently find that the community became toxic or was steered away from a certain show or genre because of community because of the community surrounding it did you learn to love again or push it away forever? Love with your heart, use your head for er- love with your heart, use your head for everything else. Alpha Omega. I love that quote at the end. Yeah. So, um, oh, go ahead. Yeah. So, I I struggle with this a lot too because, and not just with anime, but uh, with a lot of different things. Um, and it's just the natural order of things. So, when something is rising in popularity, the audience of it is, you know, directly correlated is growing bigger as well and with more people the higher chance of not good people as well so that mm-hmm. just comes that just comes with your hobby becoming popular that's why people out there that you might call a hipster exist because they get upset that now that the community is huge there's more people out there voicing fucking stupid opinions that they have right yeah so that just comes with the territory of your medium becoming very mainstream anime now believe it or not everyone is very mainstream it's pretty much something that if you want to be a cool person in 2018 you watch some anime that's just the thing like get over it like that's where that's where we're at in the anime world that's the platform we all are upon now 
um i for a while had to turn myself off from like music um music and i have go back go back a long time um i started finding people with opinions that were so cringe and unnecessary with music that i took a step back um but i came back to it i can never not come back to it um but with anime before the podcast i was very solo in my anime loving i never really engaged on like forums and stuff too much um but so that's why i never got turned off from it now that i have the podcast and this platform i'm more glued than ever but i've never had this experience with anime before um as far as like toxic uh, community i have no i've experienced both of like fans who are too overly passionate about something or fans who feel the need to uh make you feel bad for liking something and i hate both a lot um i think a one that comes with me is my experience with with this is my sister is a casual anime watcher. She casual. Just kidding. She is. I mean, she <laughs> has she's a full time vet veterinarian. She doesn't have time to really dive into it. So she only watches stuff that's like currently airing and very popular. And she loves Tokyo Ghoul. <gasps> and oh. I exact this is what I'm trying to say right now. Sorry. But I am not a personally a fan of Tokyo Ghoul, but I will be more than happy to talk to her about it because I want her to feel comfortable liking this, um, you know, this this hobby. And I want her to feel like she wants to expand it. But the problem is every time she brings up to somebody, and this is why she will not touch the anime community, that she loves Tokyo Ghoul, the instant she people hear her say that they're like oh you, it's terrible you should like this instead or oh you must be an edgelord and i feel so bad for her that <laughs> i i hate it so she watches just anime she just talks to me and nobody else about it yeah. and it's so sad i have also had people ask me what is your favorite anime and i say natsume eugene show and then they're like oh but why it's so boring i'm like well, why the fuck did you ask me <laughs> it's that yeah. stuff pisses me off so much. Your fun so, is I mean, wrong. It, it, what's up? I'm saying your fun is wrong. Your fun is wrong. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and like, I'm like... That's ugh. exactly what that is. Uh, my, my advice to people and just my general thought on that is like, it's okay for you to, to not like Tokyo Ghoul and say that you don't like it. Oh, what for sure. Is not, yeah, what is not okay is when you make someone feel bad for yeah. liking it. Right? Yeah. I, I am someone that thinks tokyo goal is super edgelordy but if mandy's sister was talking to me i wouldn't be like oh you are such an edgelord go watch something else oh i'm superior like it's dude, social awkwardness I'll, is what it is. i'll say i'll say oh uh, i don't know i think tokyo goal is pretty edgelordy but no, not but in mean, a way it's, it's where social. i'm like demeaning you you know it's social awkwardness yeah. to not be able to properly communicate with another person like a civilized human all that makes it seem like is that you don't talk to people regularly enough to be have the social skills Hmm. And I also, there are people like that in every community. I also think, though, I don't. I don't feel like our community is like the standard anime community. No, it's not. You know, no, like it's when not. when you think about the anime community, a lot of times you think about these people that are very judgmental and yaoi paddles is what I think about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yelling butt scratcher. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that was years ago, but like I feel like our community is just a lot more mature in a way. And we ain't perfect, but we're damn good. I mean, I feel pretty Come perfect. to the Discord, I would say. There's there's 700 people on climbing on the Discord, and there's maybe two people that you won't have a pleasant interaction with. Yeah, like Mitsugi. And I, and I seriously mean that. Yeah, like Mitsugi me, I'm and one, me. Of the, yeah. one of the two. And it's it's a great social platform. Like It's it's great to the point where it's almost addictive. Yeah, So you're on there every day. Every freaking night, I'm on there till like 2.30 talking to people in the morning. Yeah, right. and you can literally jump into chat like there's voice chat on there and i'll just jump in and i won't even know who's in there but you can guarantee that they're gonna be cool yeah they that. pretty much won't be a, yeah. won't be a just to clarify just to cover my own tracks <laughs> but i'm not saying that you can't be hyper critical or picky about shows but if somebody likes something don't shit on them for it let people like what they like right. it's i mm -hmm. it bugs me a lot which can be difficult <laughs> i feel like we've fallen into that trap before because a lot of times and maybe i'm just speaking for myself but um a lot like when it comes to certain types of shows you'll get really irritated at them and be like oh the show's garbage i'm so sick of this type of show and it's definitely a fine line to walk between criticizing something and then criticizing the people that enjoy that thing so that's something to be aware of as well
And we can yeah. all fall into that trap. All right, I got to pull the plug on this. This is right. crazy long. Um, I'm, I'm not even going to do the last <laughs> mailbag. We'll do it next week. So, th- cool. guys, thanks for listening. This has been a, a definitely an eventful episode of the podcast. And I hope everybody enjoyed watching Cosmo struggle. The food was actually pretty good. I ate most of it. Thanks. Um, do you guys I'm so glad th- it came out. Nice. Do you guys want to throw some Twitter handles out there? Oh, sure. Um, I guess I'll go first. You can follow me at AAA Kazuo on Twitter. Come hang out. It's cool. I post stuff about anime and video games and stuff. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, I'm not on Twitter as much. I It's the same handle for both Twitter and Instagram. I would prefer if anyone follow me on Instagram at Enzo Badia, E-N-Z-O-B-A-D-I-A. Um, that's me. That's me on Twitter and Instagram. But Instagram is where I post cooler stuff i want to i want to see you guys on there i want to see your pics too um i am on twitter as sarquindy01 because somebody took my name oh, damn and no. i don't know who but uh sarquindy's my old like warcraft character that i've always gone by like as my online handle so uh yeah sarquindy01 and my name's just mandy on there and i tweet about dumb stuff usually video games and, and uh manga I have not tweeted anything about butts recently at all. (laughs) All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next week on the podcast where we're going to be doing a game show that people on the Discord have created for us, and we are going to have a member of the Discord come in to play the game show with the four of us. Oh, Oh, that's next week? Definitely going to be a great freaking episode. I'm so (laughs) terrified. We're going to get so exposed. We don't know anything, guys. (laughs) All right, and we'll see you guys next time. Until then, peace out. Peace out, guys. Love you.